here for the pledge. Okay, Council Member Bach? Here. Council Member Martirana? Here. Council Member DeFries is absent. Vice Mayor Freeman? Here. Mayor West? Here. Now we do the pledge. Chris, if you'll leave us in the pledge. Oh. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Public um, public comment. Um, we have three minutes, and you can talk about anything that's not on the agenda. If we cannot act on it because it's not been agenda, yes, Ray Stevenson. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Now, my name is Ray Stevenson. I live at two hundred two six Street in San Juan here, and. Uh, and uh, my daughter Cecily is doing a science project. And for years we've been uh, with the neighbors talking about some of the problems with people coming down the hill uh, on Washington Street and just blowing right through the stop sign. So we decided to do a, a study on who stops and who does not stop at a stop sign. And it was, uh, it was kind of startling that the number of people who stop, we, we studied for an entire week before we started the uh, experiment. So we did 232 cars a day, 256 cars, and only about 16 or 17 percent of the cars actually stopped. Most of them rolled through, but what was disturbing was the people that just blew right through the, uh, through the stop sign, which is nearly the same as uh, 17 percent that, that stopped. So then we introduced, on, uh, on Sunday we did the experiment, we introduced a number of variables we put some signs up saying children playing, uh, uh, drive like your children play, uh, live in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and, and that seemed to help. The people, more, and more and more people stopped and almost doubled. But, but again, what, what was disturbing is the same people that blew through on the, uh, on the, uh, on the control study just kind of blew through on the, uh, on the variable. So we had the signs up. We put kids out on the corner playing, and, and people did stop. And, and when they saw kids playing, uh, even the people who blew through, that, that really uh, narrowed it down. Only one or two people blew through. And then we took my son's car, the black Mustang, we put some white uh, posters on the side that said Science Project to make it look like a police car. And again, <laughs> most people stopped. And uh, but again, it's a little bit disturbing that the people, some people still blew right through the, uh, the uh, stop sign. And during the study, we had actually uh, two occasions where the sheriff's department came. And one time, the sheriff actually pulled someone over who, who rolled through. And the second time, the sheriff came up to the stop sign when we were just standing there and came to a full and complete stop. So uh, we've been talking with the uh, neighbors for a couple of years now because it's, it's getting kind of crazy because uh, coming down on Washington Street, there's a, there's a hill. You come down the hill and people kind of pick up speed and they just don't seem to want to stop. And so we were hoping that maybe the city council can take a look at that. And maybe uh, we found that, that posting signs is very helpful. Having a police deputy out there is very helpful, although it's not very practical. And having kids playing out there is not always, uh, kids aren't always visible when people are coming down the hill. So we're hoping that the city can take a look at that and maybe post some signs or maybe put in some speed bumps. I know there were speed bumps that were put in over by the um, baseball field a number of years ago. It was, it was the same problem. People would come flying through that area, coasting off the highway, and come through the uh, ball, uh, ball field. And, uh, and once speed bumps were put in, I think that really eliminated a lot of the problems they had. 
because there were a lot of kids at the, at the ball fields. So yes. anyway, the speed bump was on Seventh Street, correct? No, the speed no, bump was no, right, over by the, uh, right over by the baseball field. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and we're hoping that maybe the city can look at that and see if uh, more signs would be appropriate because signs seem to help. Uh, once uh, the variables, once we look at the variables, the, the people, the number of people who stopped almost doubled. Uh, and and the people still roll through, which is something, but it's the people that sped through. And once the signs were posted, uh, the number of people that sped through really decreased. They're almost down to nothing. So we're hoping that, uh, that something can come with this. And I know the neighbors have been talking about this for quite a few years now. Especially on, on that uh, on that hill coming down from uh, on the Washington Street, coming down from up above on the other side of the house. Uh, so I was uh, sitting out in front of uh, Bob Kosium's house, right on the corner of Lang and Washington. There, it was Sixth uh, and Washington that we were sitting. Yeah, at. but up on Lang Street, and what I noticed, not one person stopped at that stop sign coming onto Washington Street. Uh -huh. So I'm presuming they just keep on going. Yeah, it's, and, and it's, it's not so much that they they roll through, but they really fly through. Some, well, sometimes they just yeah. fly right through that stuff. So, you know, it's just amazing to see. And I think it's mostly the younger people that are they're just going to give it a left, a look, a left, a right look, and boom, off they go. And they're, and they're and they're not really uh, paying attention because there are kids out on that corner, and and, uh, and that's why the neighbors and I were, have been talking about that for for a couple of years now to see if the city can do something about that. Right. So yeah, that was pretty much all I had. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for doing that. Well, this science project. Uh, let's see oh, I hope she got a good grade. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Stevenson, if, you, if your speaker card has all your information, we'll be in contact with you. Oh, that would be excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. We had that too, uh, no, I have to feed that them. Mr. 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 I'll look at you. Look at this. Right. Is it is. Yeah, I couldn't believe it sitting out in front of Jolene's house. I mean, just to come down off a land. Good evening. My name is Norman Lopez. I live at 305 Fifth Street. Been there many years. Uh, I have a couple of concerns. Water is one. I'm getting tired of going to the windmill and pick up my little bucket of water every other day. I'm sure you're not too happy about that either, so you know, I'm sure you're working on it, but I just want to remind you that we need water. Uh, the entrance to the post office from the vertigo side going in. Hey Dan. Um, a while back I was going in, the arrow was pointing this way, the other arrow was going that way. I'm going in this way, the arrow is pointing, and the guy's backing up against the arrow. And, he, and I was already all the way in, he wouldn't go the other way. He says, I'm not moving. And there's another car coming, and I'm stuck there. Fortunately, a sheriff came along and got him to move out of there. My, I, I want to propose that we either make it one way all the way or one way the other way east west or west east i mean and there are people that actually park parallel and they're backing up against the grain and they sitting there going back and forth you gotta do oh, something about that it's on fourth no it's, it's a windmill yeah, parking lot fourth from, from the vertigo side yeah, it's a windmill parking lot well i talked to jim about that and he said uh who was our last city manager to, uh, uh roger roger, roger. Told him he talked to Roger. I said it's your responsibility. Yeah, okay. Well, there it sits. But at first, he was told initially that it was the city responsibility. They told him how to put it, and then bam, bam, they went back and forth. So I don't know if our planning commission can work on that or whether we need to get contact Jim. But it's it's a hazard coming in and out of there let's, all the time. It, yeah. The other one is meetings. Last time I was here, a lady parked here with her. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, she was on a wheelchair blocking the entryway. It's not legal. You know, if we had an emergency to get out of here, we'd trample her to death. I'm wondering why can't we have the meetings up at the community center? Maybe we'll have more people, more involvement also. I spoke to you with a pastor here some time ago about the. Well, I'm only at 40 seconds. We used to have a rodeo down there. Some of you remember. We used to draw a lot of people. That stopped. Um, I, I retired out of the San Francisco School District, and I used to go to the concert pavilion for musical things. We put a platform down there, have musical 
productions. You can draw a crowd, make some money for the city. Does it cost anything? I mean, just a big platform is all you need. People can sit up on the side of the hill, bring their blanket. That's what they do at the Concord Pavilion. I saw some very famous singers there, and I took a blanket with my date and little chairs, and away we went. Okay? Anyway, we've got five seconds. Thank you. Uh, that's it, Ruben. Thank you, Ruben. Okay. Jim, I'm going to be looking you up, you and that guy next to you. <laughs> Any other cards? Yes, um, <clears throat> Jackie Mars Lopez. My niece, because we're. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, I'm Jackie Morris Lopez on 46 Mission Street and the um, comment that I filled out was a proposal to consider um, traffic on Mission Street. It's a very short street between 5th Street and 4th and there's traffic that's now parked on both sides. It's a two-way street and basically it doesn't hold that amount of traffic. It's just very narrow and dangerous. Um, there's overflow from vertigo, which is nice. I, I enjoy vertigo, but it just seems to make sense that perhaps considering that uh, it's such a short street, there's literally <clears throat> uh, two, three residences on it, um, single, single um, dwelling homes, and then the warehouse, the Botello properties. So it's just a very small street, but it just does not make sense to have a, a, a two-way street any longer. Uh, I grew up on that street, and it was not as congested as now. So I don't know um, in what direction you would like to make it one-way street, but I actually talked to the neighbors this weekend and said, hey, what would you think about proposing this be a one-way street for um, traffic? And they all agreed, you know, there's, like I said, there's a handful of us residents there. And what made me think about it even more is one of our neighbors parked on the wrong side of the street going uh, eastward towards 4th on Mission, and I thought, you know, that makes sense just to have one-way traffic here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that your street? Mission. mission. Is that your street? Mission. No. no. Oh. The, and that goes back to the same thing. We tried to do that to get them one way. I mean, Franklin is 30 feet wide. You put a, tr a vehicle on each side of it, and you try to get two cars down there? Smart cars. Any other public comment? Oh, and I wanted to, um, I wanted to make a public comment that when we adjourn this meeting today, I want to adjourn it in memory of uh, Al Horley, who passed away in September, uh, February 14th. And he was a longtime member of this community. Okay, consent items. And if you want to pull one of those. Move to approve. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Presentation informational items and reports. Treasurer's report. Mr. Geiger, I saw you here. Well, good, e good, good evening, everybody. Um, I just first of all like to thank the mayor and, and our acting city manager for the meeting. We had a financial uh, meeting last week, and I, we came into an agreement. And I'd like to maybe this, Ed, would you like to go ahead and explain? Go ahead and speak on that. Go ahead. So the council members may recall that uh, in reviewing the audit, you asked the auditor whether or not there were opportunities for the city to earn more return on its invested cash. And we advised you that with the Investment Advisory Committee, which is comprised of the mayor, myself, and the city treasurer, was going to meet and, and bring you a recommendation. We did meet subsequent to the deadline for putting this agenda together. So we'll have a report for you at the next meeting, which does recommend that we uh, move s some money that's currently in a very low interest a savings account from Union Bank into the lo local agency investment fund. And that we already have funds in it. Yes, but we've already had an account with LAIF. This will just increase it from $64,000 to add another million to so, so we came to that agreement that we need to move the money. Um, today I was, um, I've been talking the last couple of days, I think Friday or Thursday, just gave the, uh, the president of the bank, uh, Union Bank, a call. Um, I agree with everybody we need to make better money for our money that's there, but uh, she responded with um, something I'd like to give the council members. And then it, uh, just to let you know that they understand that we need to make more money and they're offering us a variety of ways of increasing our revenue. 
So I didn't have a chance to tell the city manager because I just got it printed at 4.30. So I'd like to give it to the council members and let you guys review it. But it, um, they are, they want to keep us as a customer. And they're offering us a variety of um, uh, ways of making more money. Is this money on our checking account or is this money no, there's a, on a savings account? The savings account money. What about the checking account money? Um, well, we, we were talked about that in a meeting. They were going to do some research on it. It's like two different pieces. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the, the piece that's in savings, they have made, um, actually, little, I have a little packet for each of you. Okay. Um, uh, I, I don't, it's your decision, but I just want to let you know that she did respond that uh, they had an interest, and uh, some of it goes up into the twos. Huh. Two, 2%. Well, better than shot kick. Hey, you know, it's been down, it's sitting at point one or two. I know, I okay. know. I'm just, yeah. all I'm doing is I'm the messenger. <laughs> so, can I come up yeah, and give yeah. each person? But we're not sure. going to, no, we're going to have to table this until the question. Yeah, I just wanted to give it to you. Yeah. I just, thank what are you, you doing with over there, Chuck? Irene? <clears throat> and thank you for your efforts. And I think, I, I don't know if this is a benefit, but I, when I started looking at it, I thought, maybe the council wants to go to this direction. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your effort. And, I, and I'm just, I'm going to let the rest, uh, I think that's about all I want to say tonight, if that's okay with you guys. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And if we can put this on the agenda for next. Uh, yeah, we, inclu we include, I'm sorry. We can include the analysis of these uh, options, which uh, offhand look like not higher interest rate on savings, but opportunity to invest in municipal bonds in order to generate. And that's something we had not previously talked about. Yeah. So we'll evaluate that option for you as well. Will, will the uh, committee have to meet uh, um, We might want to do that. So just to remind you, you have an investment policy that first is consistent with the state law that limits the kinds of things that city governments can invest in. LAFE is one of them, but so are a number of other investment vehicles that typically require a little bit more sophistication in the investment and the, and the services of a financial advisor. And offhand, that's what it looks like this is proposing. I don't mean to be the, I'm a downer here, but Ed and I talked about this um, several weeks ago. Um, so municipal bonds do carry a risk. risk. Um, in Orange County, several um, city treasurers were playing um, slot the roulette wheel with the stock market on a day trading basis. I think they're now in jail, or maybe they're out of jail, because this was about 10, 15 years ago, but they, the cities went bankrupt because of it. So it's not, not an insignificant thing. I just want to comment on the lead page. Mm -hmm. There is a, a line here. If, if you're requiring FDIC insurance, um, those are also available. Okay. 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 Mr. Mayor, we have a rule. Well, I just want to apologize for being late. I got stuck on the phone. <laughs> so sorry. I'm here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for being late. Like, no worries. It only works because you're an attorney. Uh, well, sometimes you can't hang up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Let's pull that out of this thing now. Okay. All right, any other questions on the on the checks or anything like that? No, I'm trying to frame this one. Okay. Do we need a motion on this? No. no. Okay. Just. Anybody have anything to say on the warrants? No, sir. All right. Move on to um, the Rancho Vista report. Construction progress. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, item 4B is the monthly construction progress report on the two subdivisions that are under construction, Copper Leaf and Rancho Vista. It's presented for your information. Uh, if you have any questions, we can try to address them, but otherwise there's no action required. Mm -hmm. Can you provide an overview? 
Mr. City Manager, a summary, how like things are going well. <laughs> so I have a specific question about the um, the blockage of the uh, of the uh, the drainage uh, canal under uh, at Rancho Vista, where where a citizen found a, what it, what do they call it? Um, a culvert or not the culvert? Uh, Ken yeah. Shipper, what Ken Shipper found? Yeah, yeah, the, the, a piece of concrete was, was found stuck in the uh, in the culvert. Um, and so that does worry me, because that's going to slow down the flow, and that's going to slow down the, the volume of water that can be gotten rid of at any one time. Uh, you know, and I don't know how much it costs to drag it out of there, uh, but I would suggest we do, I would suggest we drag it out of there. Well, did the job, did you... I mean, it says they're the hydrologist, right? Somebody, their the hydrologist is looking at it. Yeah. Should we not, I mean, shouldn't we be talking to the, shouldn't they be making a recommendation first? So the no, I, I just don't like junk left behind. Yeah, no, I that's, that's, that. that's, that's my opinion. And okay, and that's what this is. Okay. The problem is you need a stream bed alteration permit from the fish and wall, like fishing game. And it's just uh, it's it's a it's a six month to a year process. Oh, I I don't know. I don't. If you want to do anything in the stream bed, yeah. Well, I would have I would have assumed that was all part of the. Yeah. They had when they, well, I mean, uh, yeah. But they I had to do it to get the in there. So, Mr. Mayor, why don't I just put on the record page three of the report? There's a photo on page four, and the narrative on page three says the bridge on Third Street was installed and reported to City Council last month. However, a citizen reported a concrete remnant of an old structure remained in the stream bed. The city engineer investigated the report and observed the concrete structure as reported. The photos on page four. Following the field trip to the site, the city engineer, project inspector, and the project met at the site to discuss next steps. Removal of the obstruction is the obvious solution, but due to the sensitive nature of the stream bed habitat, a less direct approach was taken. The project owner was instructed to have the project engineer present the calculation of the carrying capacity of the arch culvert with the obstruction remaining to verify that it will be sufficient. If there is not enough capacity, the obstruction may still have to be removed. And as of this writing, we don't have those calculations. Yeah. The problem is that when uh, Jen put it out, it, it'll catch other things. It'll act like yeah. a dam. Oh, that's true. And, yeah, and so if it, if it was flowing smoothly, you could get a lot through there. But if you start bringing trash down, it's going to jam up. So when the engineer does that, they need to do that with a load in the, you know, thick pump. Thick with a load in the water. The water's not running through. And like I said, I just don't like trash being mm -hmm. garbage, whatever we want to call this, being left behind. May I ask a question, the uh, senior attorney? Deb, with the uh, fishing game, which is the, the realm that we're in here with these things, if it's a man-made obstruction, like a chunk of concrete or an old car or something, aren't there more expedited ways of having those kinds of obstructions removed? I think what might expedite it, if it is an obstruction and it's going to stop floodwaters and you might be able to get some kind of emergency permit through fishing game, but otherwise they have to go into the stream bed to get it out, assuming that that's where they're at right now, that they right. need that permission. And that stream bed is Red Lake Frog Habitat. We have to get permits from fishing game to get old cars out of, our, out of the river on properties that we own. It's not impossible. It's just that dealing with fishing games. Anyway, we're, we're going to look at that, aren't we? Not yet? Okay. Okay. Right. Um, anything else on the monthly construction report? All right. We're going to see reports from city council appointees to regional organizations and committees. John, we always start with you. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> went to MBAG last week, and they're starting their 20-year um, transportation plan for the three counties, which are uh, San Benito County, Monterey County, and Santa Cruz County. It's a, you know, it's a 30,000 foot overview of how they're gonna move people and goods throughout the, the this county area. They're, uh, it, MBAG is a planning organization. They employ six or seven planners. And, and so the, I, I think they're going to end up doing it within those six or seven planners. Um, it's going to take quite some time. Uh, and 
I was told it's not really controversial for San Benito County, but uh, occasionally Monterey and Santa Cruz County fight over it. So, you know. They, we, they obviously haven't spent much time here. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's, it's not controversial. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, obviously Highway 25 comes to mind for us, or for San Benito County, but they don't seem to be concerned about that at the, at the present time. So, uh, the mayor for Hollister was there. You know, if he wanted to bring it up, he could have. Right. I'll leave it to him. Uh, the Water Resources Board met um, February 1st, and uh, it was kind of just a uh, hum ho, same old thing. They're going to have an open house for their new water treatment plant uh, that they erected uh, near Union Road somewhere. I haven't been to it yet either. It's for incoming water, it's for potable water, it's water that comes off of uh, <coughs> Dinosaur Peak up there, um, Pacheco Pass, and of course all water, that water comes from the Sierra snowmelt, but it collects a lot of algae, fish, other things, and has to be treated to bring it up to a potable water level. So they're, they're very proud of it, it's going to feed most of Hollister. And some of San Benito County, South, uh, what's the uh, South Side Water District or whatever it is, Sunny Slope, Sunny Slope, Slope, yeah, Sunny Slope District, and uh, so it's being run by, I believe, the Sunny Slope District is the lead organization that actually is running the plant. That's it. Okay, Cog. First of all, Cog is still pursuing the uh, to get on a ballot a one percent sales tax to fix the roads in this county. Um, one thing uh, curious, and I was one of the ones, uh, what do we care about 25 as far as getting it widened or whatever, and uh, <clears throat> they did a study and a lot of people when they get to 25 coming south on 101, they see a long line of traffic, they keep going and they get off at 129 mm -hmm. and come through the back way and end up on Union Road. So if 25 was improved, it would alleviate a lot of this, what's going on out in the mm -hmm. county. Um, the other thing, uh, you're going to get a kick out of this. SB1, the uh, uh, state uh, Gas revenue for uh, fixing roads and everything. Here's the numbers for San Benito County. San Benito County would get a total of $5,130,000 projected. Of that, $1,477,000 goes to Hollister, $3,572,000 goes to the county, and San Juan gets $81,000. Thousand dollars, which is probably would maybe fix the puddles on a short section of Fifth Street. <laughs> maybe. maybe, maybe. But anyway, don't count on SB one. We need that sales tax thing, and it's going to be a lot fairer dis distribution too. That's it. All right. Tell, tell me, may I ask you a question about the sales tax thing? What? If you had to predict right now, what's your uh, level of probability that it would pass with the vote? Well, we're, it, it came close last time. You have to have 66%. And interestingly enough, uh, this supervisor district, Anthony Patel's district, we came in at 67%. We voted for it. Uh, it went down in Hollister, is where it happens. And anyhow, we're, we're just really hoping that people see that uh, no one is going to help us. The state's not going to help us. The federal government obviously is not going to help us. I mean, is their infrastructure uh, plan or whatever you want to call it, they're going to put $200 billion and when we when we need a trillion and a half to fix all the streets in the country and so that means that it'll go back to an 80-20 split. We'll get 20% from the feds and 
But uh, so COG and their consultants, everybody is, is really trying to push to, to uh, we're, we're going to fix the roads. We're not going to use this to buy buses or give safe ways to school and things like this. It's to fix the roads and hopefully put some new roads in. And some of the money will go to Highway 25, which is, it's an obvious, uh, it's a state highway, but the state will not spend any money on it. So we're going to have to do it ourselves. And San Benito County is going to have to uh, realize that we're the ones that have to take care of ourselves. The state and federates are not going to help mm -hmm. us. So we're going to have to be a self-help. When is the ballot measure? Pardon me? What's the timing for the ballot measure? Um, we're hoping to have, I think it's September, isn't it? No, no November? No, it'll be on the November ballot. Yeah. Okay. But we're hoping to have it together by the end of May to get it out to people. Okay. Cause I, I think the last measure was defeated in the blogosphere as much as anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And it, I don't believe that the, the pro side had very effective spokes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a matter of marketing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it, it, was a, it was a yeah a matter of uh, Facebook. And I mean, I've already seen comments on that Benito link about, yeah. you know, why would I spend more money, da da da, and all this other stuff. And it, maybe maybe your street is nice and smooth, like Fourth Street in San Diego. No, I, I'm I'm 100 percent in favor, <laughs> but it I believe that it went down because it was not promoted effectively. Well, and one of one of the things we want to do is get a brochure out to every <laughs> registered voter, showing them what it is we're going to do. Well, because really, because people stood up there at that meeting, yeah, and they flat told us. That they didn't trust us. Yeah, and and uh, you know we went me, <laughs> you know, but uh, I mean that's just the way people are. They don't trust. They don't trust the city council. They don't trust the board of supervisors. And, no. and we just have to get them out of that or <clears throat> correct that impression. Yeah, it, it, it my it appeared that they spent a lot of money on the on the consultant to figure out if it could pass and did not effectively spend on getting it passed. Campaign to pass it. Campaigning it. Yeah. Uh, I agree. One of the guys that we now have on our side is Steve Rosati. Oh. And he's the guy that cut measure A through. And this guy really knows. He knows. Okay. And he is definitely on our side. He's come sat down good. with us. And well, so, that's good to know. And and yeah, we're the consultants are they're going to do a phone survey and all this stuff, but um, we just have to educate the people. Well, I think that's exactly right, but and yeah. it's got to start with educating the elected. And yeah. the other thing I want to add is out there. the other thing I want to add is VTA is. Hmm? Sorry, Go ahead. I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. No. <laughs> uh, VTA is going to rebuild the intersection at 25 and 101 to make it a, yeah. a true yeah. cloverleaf type right. interchange and speed that up uh, because now you got to wait for trucks to make a left hand yeah. turn to go south on 101 and it jams up the people turning yeah. left on to 25 off of 101 and the line stretches all the way back to 10th Street almost sometimes, <laughs> especially at 6 o'clock. So VTA is going to move the intersection up, I think, about a quarter of a mile to where the road to Gavilan College goes to. Uh, I believe that's where it's going to go. And they're going to continue down, I was told, a half a mile, because that's where the county line is at. Uh, so then it's up to it's up to San Benito County to pick it up from there to run with it, to, to Hollister. You know? Well, we're responsible from the railroad. For it out. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and John is right, VTA, hopefully, and they've got a joint. Uh, VTA is Santa Clara County. Right. Yeah, correct. Okay. But uh, hopefully they're, and their drawings, I mean, it's really neat that mm -hmm. coming, going north on 25, you just swing out onto 101, there's going to be a new lane and everything. Yeah. Hopefully it'll work. That will Part of the problem. Right.
Chris? Uh, well, Dan had said, asked if we should, if, you, if I thought we should oh, be endorsing. Yeah, so, I, so my, my question, Tony, and, and to the council and, and Mr. Mayor, and to uh, the city attorney, too, is does a city council ever endorse a ballot measure? Yeah. And if they do, would this be a good one for us to get behind oh, yeah. to try to help the, uh, the electorate? Yeah, we're, uh, the plan is to, uh, well, you know, Mary, um, uh, to have her make a presentation and ask for her. Okay. Our support. Good. Okay. Yeah, I think you have to do it individually. I'm. Not, I don't think you can do it as a whole council together. Okay. I'd have to check into that, but I seem to remember that only as individuals can you endorse a ballot measure. Do you know that? We have one on the agenda. Oh, we do. Okay. All right. That's um. <laughs> but um. Uh, yeah. That's a statewide ballot measure, not a local. So. Is, there, is there a difference? We'll figure it out, I guess. I, I, it, it sounds like as regards the sales tax thing, Mary from Cogs coming, Tony, and then we'll, yeah. so we, we can we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. But I, think I think we okay. supported Measure P last time. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Hi, right, Chris. Your report. Um, gosh, the that's why I let you do it. Well, yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> fire committee. Um, we're, we just punted, and we're in the middle of the punt. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the county, uh, the three municipal, the two municipalities in the county have commissioned a um, a report to discuss whether what would be best, how to best service the the county as a whole in terms of fire protection, and they delivered the report. And then they pulled it back and they delivered it again. Mm -hmm. And that happened about three times. And now they've fired the consultant. The, the consulting agency fired the consultant that they had writing the report and are rewriting the report mm -hmm. because it didn't actually make any recommendations or discuss the feasibility. It was just, yeah, you, we think you should do this. It was uh, worthless um, in my estimation. Um, and so we're waiting for the rewrite and the, to, to continue that conversation. But there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of discussion back and forth about how best to serve the fire protection needs of the, the two cities and the county and what that may look like in the future. Well, it's hard to say. So uh, that was my only Intergovernmental? Or? There was no intergovernmental, so. Okay, good. I didn't forget. The only concern with fires in Canyon. I can report on the cannabis. Uh, so can oh, we, great, please. Um, we are going to meet again uh, this two days two days from now, Thursday morning, the subcommittee. Uh, city manager is going to join us and the assistant city manager. And we think we have things in pretty good shape to bring back to the council after our planning commission meeting, uh, the last planning commission meeting. Um, one of the things I can I can say at this point is we're starting to look at revenue opportunities. What does the taxation permitting revenue stream look like from this thing? If 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 it were to go, we don't want to be presumptuous because this council can very well say we don't want marijuana in San Juan Batista. If that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. But um, as I said, I think to Chris and to Victor, I think part of that decision for me anyway would be okay. Before you say no, Jim List. <laughs> here's, here's, how much, here's how much money it can make the town. Well, how do, you, how do you answer that question? How much money it can make for the town until you have that kind of that a, a grip on that, if you will? So that's what we're going to talk about on Thursday. Yeah. Right, Chris? Anything, Absolutely. Anything yeah. to add? No. And that's changing, too, because the states are going to um, certify banks. So that when the cash is no problem, no problem. Plus the fact that I went about my daughter in Reno, where it's legal. She took me to a pot store. She took me to two pot stores. Oh, really? And that shit works. <laughs> <laughs> we have a convert. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> I mean, my shit had been for a good 15 years. I'm taking a bracket fall again. <laughs> Is that it? And you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then on uh, mine, LAFCO, we met, we're just kind of not doing too much. I think we have to be careful of LAFCO because the person running it wants to make it a bigger and bigger organization. 
wants to do LAFCO funded EIRs yeah. and oh, that's going to be expensive oh. Oh. and it's only to resolve questions between the city of Hollister and the county of San Benito and I would think strongly about remaining and paying my fair share of that even though our share is pretty small but it's not yet but I think that's something we need to watch all right uh, is, it, is he an appointed official or elected he's, he's appointed, appointed by the county He's, a, he's like the executive director. Yeah. Ray Spinoza? No, no, no. no, no. no. Oh, yeah. Bill Nicholson. Bill oh, Nicholson. yeah. <coughs> Not that I know him, but. Uh. Okay, uh, strategic plan committee report. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we had a really great strategic plan meeting uh, last Thursday. Unfortunately, we didn't have a quorum, so it was all for uh, not. <laughs> we'll have to kind of do it again. But what did come out of it really good was uh, the gentleman over there, Mr. Benito Link, uh, wrote a really nice article in, in Benito Link, posted it, I believe, over the weekend, and thank you. It was corrected today. What? It was corrected today. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't read the correction yet. So for, uh, All right. That's it. That's it? That's it. All right, moving on to number five, public hearing items. Hey. Pardon? Oh, Jesus, yes. Public comment. Oh, yeah. uh, no, the strategic plan thing? Comment. There's no, yeah. no, no, no need for that. I didn't think so. We didn't have an official quorum. We ha I miscounted because I counted Daryl Green, who has not yet been gotcha. uh, formally referred to this, um, this uh, consult to for approval and but you know I counted the people around the table and so I miss you know we all miscounted not just me but yeah. <laughs> all right now we're going to public hearing items uh, number eight James uh, thank you mayor members of the city council sorry pardon me can we read the the can we read the title here just for the audience Oh, okay. I'm, I'll read it for you. But <laughs> so, I consider so. updated planning department application fees and certain development impact fees specifically to include an administrative overhead surcharge to planning application fees and to evaluate the current traffic impact, parks impact, public safety impact, and internet technology impact fees. Yes, thank you. Um, so, the uh, agenda is. Um, has shifted a little bit. Those are the agenda items. The action item for the City Council tonight is to adopt a resolution amending the planning uh, application user fees. These fees have not been updated in uh, many years. Um, these increases include what were just noted, uh, general services cost increase of 5%. Uh, um, we've included an administrative overhead uh, surcharge of 5%, which would be the city manager's time, the city clerk's time city attorney's time and then rather than uh, adopt it as a development impact fee we've added a five percent uh, surcharge for IT services office equipment furniture and those types of things and then I do note in here that in some cases the fees increased more than the 15 percent the 15 percent seemed to be fairly reasonable it didn't get these fees um, to a very high level, higher than other jurisdictions. In fact, they remain relatively uh, low. But there were um, several um, examples of fees, and this is entirely open to council discussion. I know there's going to be comments tonight regarding particularly the Historic Resources Board fees. But you have existing fees, um, like Historic Design Review Major of $500. That's a process that requires a public meeting in front of the Historic Resources Board, a public meeting in front of the Planning Commission, and in some cases in front of the um, City Council. Um, it requires a lot of administrative work to get the, that process ready for public meetings. And so we moved that really to more of a, a full cost recovery fee of $1,500. And, and we're prepared to uh, talk about that tonight. So um, user application fees, they can't generate more revenue than the service costs. Uh, you can't uh, make a profit off user fees, for example. Uh, but the goal is that you are collecting your costs from users versus having the staff charges come out of the um, city's general fund. So that's what these are really all focused on. And then there's some other fees that were increased, you know, almost doubled 
um, annexations, for example, went from 2,500 to 5,000. Um, that really recovers the cost of that very complex process to go through an annexation. Um, and there's other examples of that. A plan unit development, that's a very complex process. And so that fee has been increased. And really relative to the scopes of those kinds of projects, um, even at that uh, double fee of $5,000, that's really not significant given the value and the scopes of those kinds of projects. So those are really the changes. Um, I did leave the development impact fee uh, subject line on here. That doesn't require any city council action. Uh, it's just a reminder. Uh, we did suggest that we would come back with some uh, relatively uh, simple interim uh, corrections to the existing development impact fees. Um, as council remembers, when we compared the city's impact fees with the county of San Benito's just adopted impact fees, and they used a consultant service at you know, considerable expense, and really the city's in development impact fees were pretty much in line with what the county just adopted uh, this year. So they, they don't seem to be um, significantly out of line, but we did want to remind council that as part of the budget update process, uh, for next fiscal year, we will have a line item for uh, decision in terms of comprehensively looking at um, uh, updating those uh, development impact fees. Um, it's, that's not really a good time to do that. It's really just a, a matter of, of cost and benefit at this point. Um, and then I did want to note that in addition to the planning application user fees, we are going to be coming to City Council shortly uh, with um, updated international building codes. These have not been updated in many, many years here at the city. And we're also adopting a uh, building plan check and inspection fee, which is not readily recorded for the city. So that will be updating uh, that fee schedule as well. Uh, we're coordinating that project with uh, the County of San Benito and the City of Hollister. So the, the two cities in the county will all be using the same updated consistent international building codes and we will all also be using an updated uh, fee schedule so quick question will the updated code be kind of california specific for our earthquake uh, um we're in an earthquake zone you know uh, and the san andreas fault's only 400 feet from my house so you know it's, it's not like it's a theoretical question for me sure so by adopting the, the international building codes, the city has the opportunity to also adopt local measures. Um, the city can't do that unless you're update, uh, updating and adopting officially these formal codes. Uh, so the city has not updated its building codes in over, I think, 10 years. So the city doesn't have the ability to adopt local earthquake codes or fire codes or those kinds of things. So bringing this um, updated ordinance to the city council will allow um, our area building officials to identify uh, s uh, specific local uh, measures. So would that allow us on new construction, on new homes or new commercial buildings to include fire suppression systems yes. and, th and things like that which are apparently not in the code at the present time? Yeah, uh, fire suppression and, and seismic safety issues are common uh, local amendments in California okay. to those codes. And these, these codes are fairly new. They were updated, or the process was updated in 2000. There used to be uh, three sets of national codes. Uh, California used the Uniform Building Codes. There was a, a Southern Building Code. There was an ICBO code. So in 2000, uh, the, the country went to Uniform Building Codes. Um, but they, they can be uh, modified for local uh, conditions and needs. So we'll be bringing that to the City Council here shortly. James, did, did this marry the California uh, building code? Yes. Print one and the same? Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, and that was a very extensive effort. It was a very multi-year so. effort. But yeah, the, what used to be called the Uniform Building Codes are now called the International Building Codes. And the California building code is kind of assumed within the yes. state, right? Okay. And they go into effect automatically. They're updated every three years. But uh, by not adopting them as the city council, the city council is not able to then adopt local right. specific measures. Right. Yeah. So. so, excuse me again, but w going back to seismic safety and, and other things like that, fire suspect, can we kind of have you do it all at one time to kind of yes. to make it more convenient, more uh, ex expedient, and maybe even save a few bucks? So, you know, uh, um, I would like to see, you know, the 
the new code, uniform code, and, and the seismic upgrades that typical California cities usually adopt to make our buildings safer all at one time. It just would make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. In my experience, that's always done. Okay. All, all at one time. Okay. Great. Yeah, we rely on, on our building officials and other experts to help us draft that language for the, the okay. building codes. Those, pardon me, those are typically like a set of codes that are already established. It's not like we're going to go out and write a bunch of codes locally. <laughs> it's just a set of... Hey, you are. <laughs> yeah, right. Right after I get the cannabis ordinance done, right? So I just, but for clarity, I think there's confusion. I, I, I suspect that the audience doesn't understand that we're, you know, it's just there's the International Building Code, which is the universal, and then there's for hurricane areas or mm -hmm. tornado areas, they have additional, but that's all part of the, they've already created it internationally. We're just going to, they don't adopt the seismic stuff in. Right. What the know, city council will see, and what the public will see, so the, the building codes, they take up this much of the shelf space. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, very, they're very detailed, and we'll ask the city council to read those and understand them. But what uh, council will get are right. resolutions adopting the various right. uh, codes. Okay. with the uh, local amendments highlighted. Got it. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, just lastly, um, <coughs> as you see in the fee schedule, um, I did mention that some of the Historic Resources Board fees uh, did increase to recover those costs. But what I am also suggesting, and this will be subject to uh, Historic Resources Board, Planning Commission, and City Council determination, is that we bring um, a set of code amendments uh, forward that don't require that things like tainting your building go through this full HRB Planning Commission City Council uh, process. And in that case, then those increased fees would not apply. And it'll just be a small list of exceptions, things like building paint, and we can adopt um, a palette of acceptable building colors that the Historic Resources Board can and review and approve. And if some of those uh, decisions can then be administrative, that would still fall within that lesser HRB uh, fee. Sorry, I chuckled because I recalled, the, I recalled the Planning Commission or the Historic Resources Board meeting where Jim's house came up. Yeah. And they uh, were, it was, it took them quite a while to identify an appropriate shade of gray for his house. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I offered orange uh -huh. and, and black. Orange, orange and green. green. Orange and green. green and rocks oh, colors. He, he, that's what he told them he would paint the house if it was left up to him. That's what it's I did most of the 90s. Uh, <laughs> arguing about red. <laughs> Tony was here. Tony was sitting out there. Hey, uh, James, my only comment on the fee, on the proposed fee structure, is that on this menu list here, I, I think the big tickets are rezones general plan amendments and moving the um, urban growth boundary around, mm -hmm. I think you're cheap on those. Yeah. I think you're, even with your proposed increase, I think my two cents would be crank those up because if you're talking about a rezone or a general plan amendment or mm -hmm. an urban growth boundary movement, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. So, to, so query, query whether you have enough money in there to capture staff time on a, on a project like that. So, one of the things I don't think you do. Right. So right now they're twenty five hundred dollars. I'm going to go to thirty five hundred dollars. Would you suggest five thousand? I'd suggest ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> you might have some people gag over that. Well, it's, it's a big deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big it is. I, I freely admit this. So. And one thing that, that that we will move towards doing, which I, I think is not currently being tracked as well as it could be, is. Mm -hmm that when these fees are updated and then the new uh, uh, plan check and, and building inspection fees go into effect, we can start tracking uh, the, the city staff's expenditures, fully allocated expenditures and revenues on a quarterly basis. And there's gonna be some flexibility based on seasonal, you know, the summer is busier than the winter kind of a thing. But then as part of the budget um, uh, process, we'll be able to show um, how the city did in terms of full cost recovery. And so the, if that's not being achieved, yeah. then, the, then those fees still have room for movement. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's got to be more of an art than a science, you know, because these things are hard to estimate, but any of us who've been doing this for mm -hmm. a while know that a zone change in general plan amendment or moving the urban growth boundary around is a big deal. So I, I would 
uh, proposed thousand dollars for each one of those things minimum. Well, I like where you've got it from the uh, initial study in the EIRs, where it's consultant fees, yeah. you know, and I, and I think some of those could go down to answer Dan's questions as uh, staff cost. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you might put it not to exceed, you know, or something like that, but so that there is a, a, a correlation. And we're not trying to make money off of that, but we're trying to not spend other taxpayers' money to approve somebody else's project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so an EIR typically, you, you would hire a consultant, they'd have their subconsultants, their technical mm -hmm. experts. There would be a fixed fee for that, with probably um, a, a contingency sum. And then you would want to include in that, it's going to take 40 hours of staff time. And that would be, that would be part of the environmental impact report for you, using that as a specific example. But is there any way we can plug that into the uh, lot line adjustment, some of the other uh, activities? In? Mm -hmm. Standard so that it's an adjustable fee so that we can figure that. I mean, when you work with accounting a lot of times, you have to give some money up front and then they give you an accounting and if there's money left over, you get it back, which there never is, but if there's more money, you have to pay that. Yeah. Yes. So, Mr. Brandt, so I, I was going to comment on this issue and you went right to the heart of it. The base cost to process a zoning is recovered by these fees, not to argue whether it should be plus or minus yeah. or something, but, but what often is the case is that the environmental work is the most costly part of the processing. And so we have fees, the, the fee schedule says the consultant cost plus the Department of Fish and Wildlife yeah. fee, if I may, can we say plus the staff costs of administering the environmental review? Yeah, which is over and above the base cost yeah. Yeah. of the process just, it's really, really the zoning. Mm -hmm. So would, would, would that mean that there's an instance where we then we, we get a deposit up front and charge against that yes. uh, deposit? So that, 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 that would mean that we would charge uh, James's time $150 an hour to go through the EIR and, and uh, do what he has to do if for the grade. to do it for $150. Right? What? <laughs> for hour. For hour, I said. <laughs> but yes, we would keep track of the time. Yeah. For the environmental review as distinct from the base process. Of yeah, the I, like zone. yeah. I like that. I mean, I still think, though, that the base fee, Mr. City Manager, could be increased. I think $3,500 is cheap for a mm -hmm. general plan amendment. So <laughs> raise the uh, base fee, but then absolutely we should capture staff time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. involved with the uh, environmental review. And that was absolutely it. And we'll make that clear in the fee schedule, but that was the intent on, the, on page two okay. with those staff reads. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's a good point. Yeah. Tony? Um, in your uh, recommendation, you propose a uh, nexus study, which I've always said it has to be done to change these fees. But what I'm curious about is uh, these proposed fees uh, if the Nexus study comes in and says they should be either lower or higher, do we change them at that point? Well, the Nexus study would be for the development impact fees specifically, not for the user fees. No, none, none of the user right. fees. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, but, but as we discussed, we'll, we'll track these quarterly. So we'll, yes. if, we're, if we're bringing in more than we're spending, then we'll, we can adjust those down okay. If we're not achieving cost recovery, then we can always consider adjusting them further. Yeah, and I think that's our concern, is cost recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making it work, absolutely. We don't want to have him working for, you know, a lot of hours and we have to pay it all. You know. Yeah, well, we don't want yeah. other people in the city to have to pay for somebody else's project. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's the that's, that's well said. Yeah. If yeah. we want to subsidize the developers. All right, anything else? Let them pay for it. Thank you. Thank, yeah, I, I love it. I think it's a, I think it's a, a pretty fair. Uh, I, on the historic uh, design review, um, we went from 500 uh, to um, 1500. Uh, we we got a letter from uh, Ms. Vonk on on how it, we maybe should shouldn't. But anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's something we want to dial back to, like a thousand bucks or something, because that would be that would be people within the town already, and and not not all of them are wealthy. It's not a developer. It's, it's not a developer. And that's why I was thinking that if if we look at the code 
and take things like painting the building yeah. or putting an awning up and make that a less burdensome process, that would still be the lower uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Open public hearing on this. Any comment, any comment cards? All right. Close public hearing on this. Um, we need a motion. Under it. Resolution of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista setting planning application fees. Uh, read by title only. Uh, the number? Six. Oh, six? 2018 06. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Um, Next item, consider increasing the fiscal year 2018 budget for the cost of mailing park locator cards sponsored by REACH. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, not much more than that. We have a request from the San Benito Parks Foundation for to pay the costs of uh, printing and mailing the parks locator card to the addresses within the 95045 zip code. A sample of the card is included in your packet. Uh, we're recommending uh, the cost would be slightly less than $500 to do that. We are recommending $500 because we'll use the additional printed cards for our own use here at City Hall and at the library. All right. Any comment? Love it. All right. Absolutely. Is that you on the front of this gallery? <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's a comment. That's, that's Jim. Jim. That is a comment. <laughs> We need Jim Ostick on here. Walk yes, up yes we do. We're going to open this little cart. We're going to open a public comment on this. Any comment? Any cards? We're going to close Just public. In case there's any oh. questions on this. Uh, do you have any questions on the park locator card or reach San Benito Parks Foundation? No. no. My, well, only, my only comment, Valerie, is that I'm as you know, my hope is that this list of park opportunities and park assets grows and grows. Doubles and doubles. Doubles. I mean, we, right. we need open space. Yes. We need to protect and preserve and enhance open space around here for the public. And I think having these cards available at the at the at, our, at the at the bakery where we do that's that really is good for tourism too. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, the parks are an economic engine. Totally. Uh, it keeps the population well mm -hmm. and energized, and that's what our employers want. And uh, it brings in soft uh, entrepreneurial jobs uh, and small businesses. That uh, is a real plus. And I'm hoping that the county sees that as greater importance. So thank you. Thank you for the allocation. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Any other public comment? Comment closed. We need a motion. Uh, I move to allocate $500 in the fiscal year 2018 budget to reach the cost of mailing the parks locator cards. I second that motion. We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Unanimous. Um, Go not to be. Consider resolution supporting SB5, the California Drought Water Parks. Climate, coastal protection, and outdoor access for all for all act of 2018 staff report. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, on the theme of providing more parks and open space, uh, the state of California, the legislature has placed on the ballot in June uh, a proposition which is not yet numbered. It wasn't numbered at the time of the writing of the staff report uh, that would put a four billion dollar bond issue on the ballot. It would be used for three essential purposes, one for parks, one for water projects, and one for environmental funding. Uh, what attracted me to this particular proposal, as recommended by the League of California Cities, is that even the small city of San Juan Batista would be guaranteed $200,000 uh, for local park improvements. Uh, there are other, uh, with respect to the water projects, there are no guarantees, but we would be eligible to apply for a variety of projects, including recycling uh, water projects. 
And uh, I point out to you that this bond issue also has, is important to the state because it provides additional funding for state parks. And we have an interest in improvements at the local state park. So it is our, it's our recommendation that you adopt the resolution suggested by the League of California Cities that would endorse this measure. Uh, it's not allowable for us to spend money urging people to vote for it, but you're allowed to adopt official actions endorsing it, and that's what we propose to do. And further, we ask that you refer this to the Strategic Planning Committee and the uh, additional citizens who are serving as the Master Plan Parks Master Plan Committee, so that they're aware of this additional funding. In looking for their endorsement also, or just to make them aware of this? Uh, well, we want them to be aware of it, uh, and talk to their friends and neighbors about it, perhaps, as they become aware of it. But we want to make sure as, they under, as they're preparing their master plan, they've identified the funding sources, and here is a funding source. Mm -hmm. But, sorry to be obtuse, but, but what you're looking for from this council right now is an official endorsement from the city council and the city of San Batista for this measure. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? I vote yes. I move that we no, we need a, we need a public, public, public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to open a public hearing now. Uh, Monday, this morning, a member of the Strategic Planning Committee subcommittee that is um, housing the Parks Master Plan Task Force. And um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. City Manager. Uh, we really do need all the help that we can get, and so I really would support you in providing us any and all uh, resources or suggestions, or direction, and um, assistance in writing the Parks Master Plan. And our meetings are turning out to be the second Tuesday at 7 p.m. at Credo Studio. We so generously has well, um, donated the space for us to be able to use. And we're having um, consistency about uh, between seven and nine um, community members and with our two committee subcommittee members. Um, so uh, we're moving forward. and. <coughs> When we have a quorum at the Strategic Planning Committee, I will be in, enjoying and giving you uh, folks some updates about our work. And so support this and would ask that you do so as well. Thank you. Any other public comment? Julian Cosio, 81 um, Lang. Um, this sounds like a really great idea. I'd like to know. Um, before I go out supporting it with my friends and neighbors, um, is it going to come out of our taxes? How 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 would we? we it's a bond. So it's a bond. So it means it gets repaid later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and right. everything comes out of our taxes. <laughs> everything comes later. <laughs> it's a bond. It's a bond. It's a bond. It's a bond. Yeah. And and so. So we we pay it later next year, starting next year or whatever, as it passes. Would it come out of our homeowner taxes? Is that how it's? State taxes. It's a state. Thing. Yeah. Property if taxes. if the it would come out of property tax, it would come out of property tax. Out of property tax. Yeah. But it, no, I don't think so. I think it's state. Yeah, yeah Mayor Member Scott said. So this is a statewide bond issue. Uh, they would only issue bonds. They wouldn't issue all four billion dollars up front part because they couldn't sell four billions up front, but they only do it as they need to finance projects, and the repayment will be out of statewide resources. The local property tax would not be among them. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. Everything comes Thank out Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Any other comment? All right, we're going to close the public hearing. I need a motion. Move to pass a resolution of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista supporting SB 5, the California Drought, Water, Parks, Climate, Coastal Protection, and Outdoor Access for All Act of 2018. Resolution second. 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 We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Can I ask a question? Yes. See, if we can't support SB 1, how come we can support SB 5? I don't think we can can't support SB. I, I think the, well, the city attorney earlier had, had suggested she wanted to look into to what extent the council could take official action to support a local tax measure. Okay. That's the difference. It's a tax measure. Oh, okay. Local tax measure. Just went through, rattled through my brain. And it was. Uh, <coughs> right. Next.
Introduction of an ordinance correcting Article 1, Section 3, 5, 160 one, of the Municipal Code regarding water and sewer rates. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, as you described it, this is a correction to the Municipal Code regarding sewer and water rates. The existing ordinance, uh, the existing Municipal Code provides that water and sewer rates will be adjusted annually by the Consumer Price Index. That's not consistent with the adopted Proposition 218 report that you received a couple of years ago, which set in place the actual rates to be applied into the future. So when we were reviewing, when the city staff was reviewing the municipal code with respect to water and sewer rates, we saw this inconsistency and we're recommending that that inconsistency be corrected by revising that section of the ordinance so as to require that the CPI adjustment would be for those rates after the multi-year rates that you've already adopted uh, in 20, 2020. 2020. I also want to advise you, though, this is not the only inconsistency, ambiguity, or correction that needs to be made in the municipal code. It's just one that, that stood out as we were reviewing the water rates. <laughs> what you're hearing is the sound of four heads being slapped. Okay. For all I know, it may still be illegal to spit on the sidewalk yeah. in San Juan. Well, we thank you for coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment from the council? That seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. Uh, public comment on this. Open the public hearing. Any cards? Any people? No? Okay, close the public hearing. I need a motion. Uh, I'll do it. Ordinance of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista approving an amendment of the San Juan Batista Municipal yeah, Code to Section 3-5-160 CPI adjustment. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, next item, where the heck I go? Uh, do we? That's an ordinance. So that's not a first reading? Yes. Introduce our first reading ordinance. Oh, okay. Yes. So th this is an. This will come back to us then next. Th this is both an urgency ordinance and it's a regular ordinance ordinance to um, re reauthorize. Sorry. Okay. This I was still on the last one. So okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Got it. Someone. All right. Let me consider adoption of an urgency ordinance reauthorizing the collection of a fee to support public education and governmental PEG channel facilities within the city. Okay, so this is a, a ordinance which is both an urgency ordinance which requires a four-fifths vote and a regular ordinance to reauthorize the collection of PEG fees. Are they two separate things? There yes, there's two, two separate ordinances here. Okay. Um, the urgency ordinance will, will go into place right away, and then the, uh, the ordinance itself will take a first and second reading to keep it on the books, because um, the urgency ordinance would only last for 40 days. So we need to uh, make this a permanent thing. And, and just to explain, it's a you know, pretty convoluted issue. But um, back about 10 years ago, um, the, the government eliminated the ability to, of cities to individually contract with cable providers and receive franchise fees. And this act was called DIVCA. And under DIVCA, they said the CPUC will only authorize state um, franchises. And so it took that away from the cities. And what the cities got in return was this PEG fee. And um, the DIVCA uh, legislation has a sentence in it that says, um, if new providers come in, then um, th the city has to reauthorize their ordinance. Well, it also provides that the state-issued franchises expire in 10 years. So the 10-year period is run, your cable provider uh, Charter Spectrum went back and uh, renewed their franchise, state franchise with the CPUC, and then um, they didn't really tell us, well, you have to reauthorize your ordinance. 
they just uh, sent us a, a letter that said, well, we're not going to pay peg fees anymore because you haven't reauthorized your ordinance. And um, so all the other cities say, well, we could fight it, but you might as well just take an, a simple action to reauthorize your ordinance. So this adds a sentence to your um, cable franchise ordinance, which is one of those very conv convoluted things that could be improved upon um, in your city code. It has like far more language. The old language is still there from when you could individually do the franchise. But anyways, it fixes the part about the stamp state franchises and says the, uh, the ordinance is reauthorized. So um, I'll need you to vote first on an emergency ordinance, which will allow you to immediately um, collect the peg fees. And then the other ordinance, the, you know, take a second action on an ordinance which will reauthorize, and that language will go in your city code. And um, that will be effective um, after the second reading and 30 days. All right. Got it. Okay. Can we do this uh, both together? No. Um, well, you can take pu your public comment together, but you okay. should take two separate actions. Okay. One for the urgency ordinance because it needs the fourth fifth vote, yeah, and yeah, then I second for the regular ordinance. Sam, you had something? Yeah, we should, we need council discussion because I like to I like to speak on this. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, this is the state taking away your. Um, uh, community access television. They, they just said, it's really not important enough. We'll just take it all. This was about 10 years ago. They gave most of the power to the PUC. You know community access television as CMAP, you know, channels uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20. You'll notice that they had a severe decline in service compared to what, what they were 10 years ago. Um, yeah, this is CMAP right here, the nice lady and the camera. <laughs> um, but it, this is how we fund them now with the peg fees and things like that. Um, there's really not much we can do about it. It's the state kind of taking over. That's it. Thank you. Any other comment from the council? No. Nope. All right, we're open this for public comment. Any cards, any public comment? All right, close public comment. Uh, I need a, a motion on the, on the, on the uh, reauthorization. Um, urgency ordinance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, make a motion to waive full reading and adopt by four-fifths vote an urgency ordinance of the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista reauthorizing the collection of a fee to support public educational and government PEG channel facilities within the city. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Uh, opposed? It's going to be unanimous. Resolution number one. Okay, and second motion. Uh, one. Ordinance. ordinance one. Consider an adoption of an ordinance adding chapter 52018 to the San Juan Batista Municipal Code reauthorizing, reauthorizing all the collection of fees. For public. We did that. The same. No. This is the second item that the you're referring to. This is the long term. Yes. Correct. Yeah. All right. Staff, so, same thing? Yeah, I think we're done with yes. public comment on both. So Okay, we took public comment on both? That was the intent. Yes. Unless there's somebody else who forgot about it? So, okay. so is the second one the emergency or urgent one? Or no, the first, first one, one is the urgency. Okay. So he is the, the regular, the first okay. one. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. A motion. I make a motion to introduce an ordinance to the City Council of the City of San Juan Batista adding Chapter 5-20-18 to the San Juan Batista Municipal Code, reauthorizing the collection of a fee to support public, educational, and government PEG uh, channel facilities within the city. Second that too. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, passes unanimously. Uh, F. Wow, we are. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. May I have a request that we take a recess? Oh, God. A brief recess? Yes, wonderful. The youngest guy in the council. Jesus, Lord. <laughs> <laughs>
consider extending American cell tower lease. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, in 2002, the city first entered into a master lease with a company called American Cell Tower to locate uh, uh, a tower and cell facilities uh, on near the water reservoir site. Uh, this is a request to extend that lease coming from American Cell Tower. They are a master lessee. They in turn sublease to the individual carriers. They had been advised by at least one of the carriers that they were considering leaving this site, and another carrier said they would, they would likely leave unless there was an extension. So for over a year, the city staff and American Cell Tower have been discussing the terms under which the lease might be extended. The lease in 2002 provided for a base rent. It would be adjusted by the consumer price index uh, and uh, a flat fee per number of carriers. In exchange for this extension of the lease, uh, the previous city staff and I have negotiated a couple of provisions. One is an upfront payment of approximately $30,000 for the privilege of extending the lease and to change the terms of the payment from CPI to 3%. Uh, per year. Uh, some of you have inquired, well, isn't the CPI a better deal? So looking backwards from 2002 to 2017, the CPI has increased by 36%. Had it been 3%, it would have been 56%. So the council needs to make a judgment as to whether you think in the future a CPI is a better deal than a flat 3%. Uh, I did look around and talk to other agencies who have recently entered into such leases and didn't find any that were greater than 3%, some that were less than 3%. So on that basis, we're recommending the extension of the lease with the additional upfront payment and changing the terms from CPI to 3% annual increases. Comments on the council? I have a comment. Uh, so Mr. City Manager, I think I was one of those who did the original cell tower lease uh, up there at that water, it's below the water tank, right? Yes. On Nylon's Hill. And at that, it's always been something that I was <clears throat> upset about because those guys came in here and said, we're going to plant blackberry bushes and you won't even see it and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then I leave and I go to the county for 15 years. At the county, I'm telling you, we did. I, I personally never did a cell tower that was not camouflaged. So it was a tree tower or it looked like a water tank mm -hmm. or something. And those things are ugly. And is there any opportunity um, now with this lease negotiation to ask them to do uh, a camouflaged uh, cell, cell apparatus in the configuration of a tree or a water tank or something that fits the community better than those things because they're ugly. Uh, if it's the council's desire to not adopt the recommendation but to, to seek additional terms, then yes, we can pro propose that. But I think we would not require the, uh, the, re the removal of the existing tower and its replacement with something else. Quite very well. The, the kinds of cam so-called camouflaged look like a tree towers are brand new construction of that type. There's an existing tower at the center. Okay, so my, my question to you is... Whether to plant blackberry bushes is a different subject. But. No, they, they never planted them. They, they planted them the whole thing. Uh, my question to you is, is now an opportunity to get that which this uh, community should have gotten way back then? Uh, if it's the council's desire to, to not adopt this recommendation, but instead give us direction to seek something else, yes, you could do that. But we do have an existing lease that remains in place. So my, my uh, fear is that there's something new coming on called 5G. Uh, it's an upgrade for 4G. And it's going to be a considerable hardware upgrade by the phone companies themselves, <coughs> both on towers and are going to need individual repeater stations, usually on telephone poles about every quarter mile. So this tower lease may or may not be functional five years from now. Four, 5G is supposed to roll out at the end of this year in certain places. Read the word San Jose. Who knows when it's going to get to San Juan. But uh, it, it's going to require also new phones. You'll have to trade in your phone for a 5G phone. Um, but it's something to think about. When we're making a long-term lease, this is something to think about. So um, we need to 
they, they, they might just say the heck with it and walk away because the 5, 5G will be, go somewhere else and then you'll have your repeaters on the poles which they'll rip from PG&E. They need that site, no matter 5G or 8G or 2G. <laughs> they need that site for 156 because that's the only way you okay, can my inclination, I mean, that, that seems like a fairly straightforward request, and my inclination would be, if this, this puts us out 30 days, I don't, I'm not sure I see the harm. Is there, I mean, there's, obviously, we've been working on this for some time. You've been working on it, and the previous city manager worked on it for quite a while. Um, but I think it would be... I agree. I agree. I, and I want to thank the city manager for his work. hard work on this. I agree with the money. I agree with 3% over CPI. It's always a better deal. And make it look like a tree or a you know, windmill or something. Make it look pretty. That fits San Juan Batista better. <laughs> it would be nice to have, well, it would yeah. be nice to know what the options are, if there are options. Any other comments from the, from the council? Okay, I'm going to open the public. Oh, uh, okay. What? Oh, Tony. Tony. At one time, and it goes back a couple of years anyway, they offered to buy that site from us. They did. And that didn't come up in your talk to it. I have not seen, I have not had any conversations with the master leasee, and they have an agent who works for yeah. them about purchasing the site. Frankly, I have seen in the correspondence from many years ago suggestions about buying the site yeah. as an alternative to this lease by a different company. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't know what, or, yeah, I didn't even know what the dollar amount was. It was just that it had come up that they, somebody wanted to buy that site. Well, we'll open a public hearing on this. Do we have any cards? Anybody want to speak? You don't have to have a card, Tony. We know who you want. I don't. <laughs> I'm still the same person. Um, I just have a, a question because, you know, it would have been nice had it looked like a tree, but it sounds sounds like, you know, we could continue this lease and get a little money for the city out of it. Um, but what I wonder is under the conditions of the proposed lease, would they be allowed to put up any more ugly looking or can we at least stop them from putting up any more ugly looking rather than trying to go back and making them take down the existing or something. Um, because when you think about our water tank up there, the city did a real poor job of policing their own construction and having trees put up there like was supposed to happen. They put up oak trees, which are great and native, and very, very slow growing, and will never, in my lifetime, camouflage the water tank. Yeah. So it's like, we already have some issues on that hillside, yes. I say we live with them, and if possible, at least in the new lease, say, well, you can't put up any more ugly things. If you put up any more, they have to look like a tree. So under the lease, uh, they would not be allowed to put up any new towers ugly or not, <laughs> but they would be allowed under the on the existing tower to add carriers. Mm -hmm. Hang additional equipment. Yep. Okay. I think they call that co locate. Where they put you know, sure. Sprint, Verizon, AT and T all on one tower. And they just add those things to the existing tower mm. on an ongoing basis. So I, I, I can tell you guys right now, I must have done Jim was sitting in the back of the room when I did I did fifty cell towers, I think. Yep for Verizon, AT&T, for all these guys. And in San Diego County, you do not do a cell tower unless it looks like a tree. You just don't. Okay. So why, and that, cause that was just a policy that we made. Mm -hmm. We said that's the way it's gonna be. So why would San Juan Batista have lesser standards than the counties? Okay. Anyone else from the public? Yes. Please. Taking a look at the um, memo that was um, addressed to the, um, it's in the binder here for public review. So I have a comment is that I understand about the aesthetics of the tower and I agree with Mr. DeVries, Councilman DeVries, that if 
at, at the onset of the contract that the towers needed to look like trees and fit in with the landscape, then I think before moving forward and giving this company our money up front, that we should um, remind them of that stated position that we need it to look like a tree and we've pretty much given them a pass. We should have that corrected without any um, penalties or any sort of revision to, to the lease because it's something that they didn't hold up to. Um, second, my comment is, more importantly as a consumer, in living in San Juan Batista, I've already had to change my, um, my um, cell company because I was not getting any service or poor service with AT&T. Um, so I switched to Verizon after being a 15-year customer with AT&T. Living on Mission Street, I'd get drop calls. So I recently, this last summer, had to change. So I'm kind of concerned or wondering if that company and the, the suppliers of the cell service, I mean, why aren't they equitable with the service that we're receiving? Um, that's my, my um, comment on that issue. That uh, importantly, it should be providing adequate service, and it seems like it's not. There's a difference in the providers or the suppliers. And then I have a question for the city manager, and I appreciate your homework in investigating the uh, rates and the one-time payment. You said it was um, thirty thousand up front, and then you went on to say that you couldn't find any cities that were charging upwards of three percent, but you did find some cities that were uh, charging two percent. So I'm interested in uh, why are we choosing them to give them three percent, and the cities that were doing the two percent increase. Um, what size were those cities? Were they comparable to our city? Were they larger? Because once again, I think San Juan, we sort of get beat up, you know. Uh, and we as citizens have to kind of look out for ourselves, just like Mr. Bach, Councilman Bach said, that we're not going to get money or help from the state or the feds on our road improvements, and we have to do our own work. Well, I think that we need to just continue with that line of thought. And if, it's, if we can get it for 2%, why can't we? Especially if we're a much uh, smaller city than the cities that are getting charging 2%. Thank you. Jackie, before you leave, we're charging them. Three They're not charging us. Okay. We're asking for the highest rate of increase annually that we could find out at there anywhere. Okay. So the 3% is the highest rate increase annually, or every whatever the period is, that we could find. So in fact, we're getting the So it's revenue that we would be charging. This is all revenue. We're not Thanks. paying anything. Thanks for correcting. So sure. then the 26000 upset is what they're paying us. That's just a one-time one -time payment. Deal. Okay. And then we get the monthly or, and I forget what it's, yeah. Because yeah. I can tell you that, rent. yeah, I, I don't know if there's any way that they can assure that the, the two cell providers, which are the main ones here, that they can assure that we're going to get proper service because, I mean, the rates go up, you know that, and yeah. like I said, I had to switch um, providers just because we don't get adequate sure. service with the, with the cell towers. Yeah, hey, I just want to, as long as, you, um, Jackie, I want to respond to your other point, mm -hmm. which is whatever they agreed to originally is what they should be, they should do. They never agreed to make it look like a tree or anything else, and that's what really infuriated me, because they stood right where you are right now and lied to me and said it's not possible. We can't make the cell tower look like a whatever. Mm -hmm. And we thought, oh, geez, well, because this was like, this was a long time ago, right. this was like 1991, 92, when this happened. And um, actually, I was on, uh, you know, the lighthouse in Big Sur? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have this really cool old 1800s water tank. It's a cell tower. Mm -hmm. It looks like a water, an old wooden water tank. It's mm -hmm. up on posts and stuff. It, all that is is a cell tower. Right, there. and then there's the... You can make a cell tower look like anything. There's the trees that are on a 101. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So, right. So, yeah, so... so much 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 those guys in fact, the trees are growing those, more branches, uh, I've once noticed. Those, once those cell guys were lying to me, they were telling me, and I got smart, and I found out, no, you can make a cell tower into anything. And I can tell you, like I said, we make them all look like trees. So if there's an opportunity, as I said to our city manager, for them to do that now, I think we should do it. Okay. Why not? And better service. And I apologize for misunderstanding the process. Thank, thanks for explaining that. Yeah. My only concern, are we done with the public hearing? All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. My only concern is 40 years at 3%. I bought a house at 18%. <laughs> you know? <laughs> On your credit card? <laughs> no, I bought it from a mortgage, a VA mortgage at 18%. Wow. Ouch. Yes. Ouch. Ouch. 
As a mortgage broker, we love you. It's your fault. So I get a notice about any percentage for 40 years. But that's just my input. Do we have, a, we have any more comment on this? Well, technology is changing rapidly enough that who knows what it's going to be like in five years. Yeah, I, could take, I could take a stab at a motion. Okay. Well, you just when, want to pass this. I'd like to answer. Oh, yeah, I'm um, sorry. The staff. More comment. One of your problems to was you were with AT&T. Uh, dropped calls. Yeah. That was I mean, you had the worst provider in the world right there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was your fault. Oh, city Council. <laughs> I have to second that. Yeah. <laughs> so come to the City Council for advice on cell phones. Right. Providers. We won't be endorsing that one. And don't get, <laughs> And they turn to the antenna for consumer cellular, and I can't get any call unless I go outside. <laughs> All right, do we have a, a motion? Yeah, I, I'll, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to have a motion. I, I would make the motion that the uh, city council instruct the, uh, or request that the city manager enter back into negotiations with this cell, uh, cellular company, Lessor, um, with uh, the parameters uh, identified in the staff report i.e. the money is fine. Uh, I agree with the 3% That's part of my motion, but that the uh, cellular company uh, <coughs> configure the tower uh, to be what we call camouflaged or in the shape of a tree or something else that's less obtrusive. And, the, and that we also empower the city manager to uh, negotiate on that too. So maybe if they have to make it look like a tree now, maybe they don't want to pay as much money or something, but I, I would uh, request that the city manager re reopen the negotiations with this cellular provider to address those goals and objectives and then report back to the city council at the next council meeting in March. I, I don't know if we need a, that needs to be a motion or just a consensus instructions back to the yeah if, he's, if we're instructing to, the city manager, the city manager it doesn't need to be a motion does it we don't well, I appreciate the motion okay I'll second that <laughs> all right, we have a motion the second all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. unanimous I think they should make it look like a windmill I think they should make it look like an old car well yeah <laughs> Jesus you know, look, an old windmill would be cool no, no, those trees are ugly they can look like a mile away they are ugly I know they, they look fake but an old windmill would be neat I don't believe in Arizona. just put a windmill and a vein up there on, on top of the car that's so cool and people say oh that's where Sam Long gets his water did you get that little sidebar we by the way we agree that the fake trees look fake and they would be really neat it's probably cheaper for them I thought we agreed on the old car <laughs> How about a rocket? I don't windmill would be neat or water tank from it, right? Oh gosh, the windmill would be cheap for them. Yeah, windmill would be really cheap I for them. I appreciate that comment because boy, I should have picked those trees up. Thank you. All right, we had, a, we, had, we had a motion, we had a vote, we're all set. We're moving on to age. Hallelujah. Pardon? Sorry, nothing. Go ahead. Oh. Consider changes to the Planning Commission Selection Process Ordinance 2 3 110 and provide direction to staff. <laughs> okay. Um, this is this is kind of one of my ideas. Uh, so I, I think the way we select planning commissioners now and the way we treat planning commissioners isn't always the way it should be. So I'm just suggesting that the city council take a more active role in choosing our planning commissioners because we ask them to take a lot of incoming heat on subdivisions and political decisions and we, we need to not let them hang out to dry and so we need to know them a little bit and uh, um, and so there's basically two uh, two ways that uh, the city manager and I have thought to change it one would be to um, require every city council member to interview and select the planning commissioners once they've received all the applications for the planning period. If planning commissioner A retires or, or moves out of town or for whatever reason wishes no longer to continue on the planning commission, we would open up a period of application, we'd receive any and all applications and then the individual city council person would go through and select who he thinks would be most appropriate for the city council and recommend to the full full city council. The other way would be for the sole 
full, excuse me, full city council to interview the said candidates. Uh, that would probably be the better way, except it might take more time. <laughs> Any discussion on the council? I, I, John and I have talked about this a fair amount, and I agree with them that the, the, the process that we're using seems very inconsistent. Um, and, you know, the, the uh, and I'll use as an example the last, the last appointment, Tony, I think was yours. And um, they, there were two fairly late applicants um, and because of the, the posting, the process, and so forth, technically, as the mayor, that appointment, I could have made that appointment myself mm. and completely left you, your, you out of the process. Mm. Um, as, the, the, as the code is written, if you take longer than, I think it's 60 days to make the appointment, then it is, it's, it falls to the discretion of the, of the, man, of the mayor. So, you know, and it didn't seem like you, it wasn't that you were taking, in my view, an inappropriate amount of time, and I certainly didn't want to step in because it didn't feel appropriate, certainly didn't feel, seem appropriate, but that, that's the way the process is written in the code. And I think having an application period and then an interview period, as John is suggesting, makes a lot of sense. I, I do fear that, you know, if we go through an, an interview process in, at a meeting like we would have, we're having tonight, that could take an awful lot of time. But that kind of, that does go back to the idea of potentially having more frequent city council meetings. You know, if we were having two council meetings a month, it would be a lot easier to <coughs> accommodate stuff like uh -huh. that. Um, anyway, so that that's my two uh, cents worth. Uh, my comments on this are up until just this last time. I understand? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Each one of us had to go out and dig up a planning commission. <laughs> Literally. Uh, I mean, you know, we had to talk to somebody. Well, okay, my first appointment in this term was Pat Garrett. Mm -hmm. I went and told Pat, I said, you're going to go on the planning commission. He said, no, I'm not. I said, yeah, you're going to go on the planning commission or I'm going to quit the cemetery board. <laughs> <laughs> so then he says, oh, okay. <laughs> but then... He got into it, and, and, and then I had to find, the way it was, I had to find an, a replacement for him. And I had talked to David uh, Adaris prior to that. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, I'll be, I'll be your planning commissioner for the rest of your term. Sure. Then these other two ladies right. came up, and I had already told David. I understand. You know, so... Yeah, I would have liked to have talked to all three. Well, in fact, I did. I ended up talking to them, and, and my advice to them was, hey, why don't you run for city council in November? <laughs> because they seem to be very <coughs> interested in the town and everything. Sure. Of course, planning commission is a good way to get your feet wet. But to explain to you, John, that's the way it was. We didn't, you can ask Trish. How many applications did we get for a planning commissioner prior to this last one? A lot of times we never got any. I fully realize that, and, yeah. and we, we may or may not have to work with that in the future. I, I would remind the entire city council that <laughs> in the near future we're going to be getting somewhere between 300 and 500 new residents. Uh, uh, presumably most of them adults mm -hmm. and and so the pool might increase we have had trouble with a what I would call a good pool okay and that's what that's what Tony's basically saying the yeah. pool is small you know and, and we have to dig them out of the woodwork or well I think it I think it's something I part of it is talking to people not waiting until there's an opening to discuss the op, those options or those I thoughts with people there's somebody sitting in the audience right now who's expressed interest to me about being on the Planning Commission there was another person who I believe I told you about when you when you made your last appointment who has expressed interest he did not formally apply mm -hmm. there were two more two other applications when John and Dan were both um, uh, elected they actually they came to me and asked me to appoint Darlene suggested put Darlene forward as a as a suggestion which was has worked out wonderfully um, Darlene Boyd 
so I, I don't I, I can appreciate that there have been hard times but in the time in the four three three a little over three years that I've been on the council I haven't had any trouble identifying people to be planning commissioners and I, I've helped multiple other council members find planning commissioners yeah, I, I'm not saying that sir uh, that's the way it was I understand and, yeah. and and yeah if we get like I was just flat amazed that we got three applications you know <laughs> because like I say we had to go out and grab my scuff in the net and say hey you're going to be a planning commissioner mm -hmm. but, but I think the issue at hand or the issue before us is whether we have we switch from the current system which is that an individual council member appoints a, his or her commissioner versus a planning commissioner being appointed by the council at large. And I think I, it used to be the council at large. When I got on the San Juan Batista Planning Commission, again, like 1990, 91, I was interviewed uh, by the council sitting in on Bonk um, as a total. I sat in a chair, and they were all up here, and uh, you know, they had asked me questions. And, but it was kind of cool, because then you felt like that the council was appointing you, know, as opposed to an individual council member making the appointment. I think that model, and I'm not sure when that switched exactly, or maybe a few years ago, but um, maybe they're trying to model after the county. The county supervisors appoint individual planning commissioners because it's by district. Right. Exactly. And that makes sense. Yeah, we do that large. Yeah, Valerie left, but Valerie's the new uh, county planning commissioner for district two for Anthony. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that makes sense because Valerie lives in District 2. And you, you want someone that lives in South County to be the planning commissioner for South County. But in San Juan Batista, do we really need that? I don't think no, we don't. Need. It's not. Because we're, our, as council members, we're not divided up into districts. I agree. So I, and, and if the only argument against interviewing and selecting council, uh, planning commissioners is it will take a little bit of time, I don't think it's going to take. First of all, I think that's a weak argument. Yeah. So let's just, let's just <laughs> take the time. And appoint them, and I don't think it's going to come up very often. I think every once in a while we'd have to do that, and I think we can handle it. I agree. I, I think the benefits uh, outweigh the cost. I wasn't suggesting that. You know, I was just kind of throwing out the counter argument just to make it. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, but wait, let me ask you one question now. Um, okay, I'm going to go off the council in November. Uh, the way it's been before, David Medeiros would that would be the end of his. That's planning right. Commission tournament. So quite possibly you're going to have to find three planning commissioners uh, by the beginning of next year. Sure. And, well. and, but is that still going to stay in? If we did this with the whole council, I don't see, you would have to set a term, say four years, whatever, and it's not, it has no relationship to like me going off the Council, you know, if if the whole council had appointed David, he'd be on for four years. Mm -hmm. You know, and we also, frankly, we spend some money on the planning commissioners. We uh, often yeah. send them to League of City planning commission conferences, which I fully support. Yeah. Uh, but, but that costs four or five hundred dollars for the entrance fee to the convention center and whatever and there's uh, travel. travel expenses and things like that yeah. uh, so you know and you do that a couple of times a year times two three people it adds up to the city is investing a couple thousand bucks in the planning commission yeah. and, and we need to uh, yeah, terms would be good because it would give us a time to, to recoup it you know what I, if I you know what I mean Sure. So, why, so why don't we say this then? Yeah, John. Yeah. Let me just let me just say one thing before this. If you're not going on the council for three years. Every problem, every crisis we face has come directly from our own from the actions or inactions of our own planning commission. We're a town of two thousand people. Why doesn't the city council just sit as the planning commission also? I mean, that that's done. That's been done in a lot of places. I mean, it solves the whole problem. We're elected. We'll be the city. We'll be the planning commission as well as the city council. That would take two or three meetings a month. I know. Yeah. I knew you were going to go for it. <laughs> uh, um, um, as 
as an unpaid volunteer, I, you know, that would be, I think we have enough to do already with two meetings yeah. a month. And I would agree with that, but except, I mean, like I said, every crisis I face came directly from my own. Well, that's because, that's because they take a lot of political heat. We don't always back them up properly. We, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of reasons. Part of the reason was a previous city manager who was... Oh, you know, I don't want to say it, okay? I need to move on. Um, but, uh, uh, John, I think but, uh, the, other, the other point that it brings up, I, how often do you meet with your appointee? I don't think there's very much interaction no. on most of our parts with the planning commissioners. And I think if we were more, if, if there was more interaction between the council and the planning commissioners, that would help in those situations. We, have, we don't have professional, we don't have a program for professional development either on the part of planning commissioners or council members, you know, we've all now, been, you know, have been on the council for a while, but um, there's no formal training. There's it's just, here it is, raise your right hand and go for it, buddy. And that, to me, that, that's where we have a massive opportunity is to increase the level of, it, the desires there, but the professional training and the you know the consistency is that where we're lacking, and there's a tremendous opportunity for that. You know this has been a, an incredible eye opener. I was talking to somebody today about the the couple of the developments, and it's like I, you know, it never occurred to me that they would bring in that much dirt to build those 86 homes. I couldn't have conceived of that much dirt being moved well, in order, because everybody's saying, oh, it's a floodplain and da da da, and what, you know, what are they gonna do? Well, I guess the obvious answer is they're gonna bring in more dirt than, you, than I ever could have imagined. And you know, well, those are the things been... that you don't see and understand until you sit here and do it for a while. One of the things that I remember vividly was Dan DeVries standing at that podium <laughs> chastising our planning commission for just giving them whatever they yeah. wanted. Yeah. And uh, Dan and I both looked at, you know, if you ask for A and you get A, who the hell ever heard of that? You know, the ask was the opening bid. Yeah. And so people don't know that. And so we've gotten into a lot of problems with that. Well, I agree. And I think, again, that comes back, that partly comes back to this, the, that interaction and direction. We're, I don't think we're providing very very good direction to the planning commission. And you can't. Prior, I think if, if, if well, you go to the planning commission and you testify on a project, no, no. you're disqualified from acting as a supervisor. But, but Jim, council. we're talking about conceptual. What you know, this is just like the direction of the city staff. We, our prior city manager, we let him operate very much independently, and you know, I think we've all learned a very valuable lesson there. Yeah. That we need to be more involved. We need to be providing more quality direction, and I, that just goes across the board. Again, another reason for those more frequent meetings, so that we can have more interaction. You know, the cell tower question, I, I didn't even realize we, this was in a, was actively being discussed until a couple of days ago when I got my packet. You know, we're just not, you know, we're not in tune. And that's my fault. I've had a very busy schedule recently, so I haven't been able to come in and visit with the city manager outside of the meetings uh, the last few weeks. But, but you can know. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, I know what your suggestion is. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no. What I would suggest is, okay, we, we follow the same process of uh, when there's a vacancy on a planning commission to post it for applications. Mm -hmm. All right. But make a couple of changes. Uh, instead of an individual council person appointing that person, the whole council will do it. That's right. But we also have to give them a four-year term. Sure. I agree with that. Yeah. Put that in the form of a motion, Tony. Well, I'll I, second it. Do, do, I don't know that we need a motion. You're just, this is a discussion item, This is a discussion right? item, and, yeah. and we can, uh, you know, bring it back next month with a, a, a better yeah. format or su such. Uh, I just wanted to say I really don't agree with doing away with the planning commission. But do you, but I, I think I think. Do you agree with someone? Yeah. Yourself? Yes, I do. I I, I, I think a four-year. Okay, I completely agree with Councilman Bach on a four-year term for planning commissioners. And that they're appointed at large. 
by the entire by the council or by, by right. yeah. you know so it's interviews and appointment yes. by yes. the full council I, I agree I'm on and, board and so that would be the type of interview process maybe not quite as extensive and not quite as formal as what we went through with the city manager oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it'd be easier just to be the plan yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. So then, Hold the mirror up to them if they're breathing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we need to get away from. Tom. So, on this discussion item, that I, do we have to have a public hearing on this? We're going to open it up for the public comment. Public comment. Yeah. Public comment. Any cards? Julian Cozio. Why did I know that? I, like Councilman Bach and Councilman DeVries, was on the Planning Commission before they ever started the one council person, one planning commissioner. And that was instigated by the city manager at the time, Jan McClintock, oh. who wanted myself and another person off the council, oh. or off the planning commission. Oh. Um, yeah, and actually, yeah, 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 yeah. actually, the way they did it was, and, and this is why I'm so opposed to your idea, Jim West, <laughs> um, you know, I really didn't expect you to want to support had, for that idea. <laughs> we actually had two complete boards. Yeah. So they were consolidating ten people into five, and if you didn't have a friend on the uh, council, which I did not at the time and needed the, the other person that Jan McClintock wanted off the planning commission, you're not going to get in there with, with only five. And it was fine with me because when they were consolidating the 10 into 5, they needed to keep some of those HRB people mm -hmm. on. And it was very important that they keep some of them on. I was less trained. Mm -hmm. However, I was more trained, I believe, than some of the current um, planning commissioners because we had meetings with the lawyer uh, mm -hmm. who, you know, talked to us about ethics and all sorts of things. They uh, were always suggesting online things that we could do, and um, I wasn't there long enough to take advantage of any travel to go to seminars or anything, but, but all that stuff is available. And we need to make sure that our planning slash HRB is well-trained, as well-trained as possible for volunteers, and I don't think we need to saddle the <laughs> council with trying to do that too. And, and there's plenty of good reasons why, why a lot of the problems seem to come from your planning commission. They're not coming from your planning commission, they're coming from because of the process. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's not any fault of the planning commissioners. And also to your point about all of the dirt, there was just as much dirt brought in to build Creek Bridge because that was part of that floodplain. Oh, there was a ton of dirt brought in and they were pounding it down to well, they were they brought in a lot. You're getting off the subject. Uh, there used to be a little stream that came through there. Okay. Uh, Thank you. That's, and we're not going to become the planning commission. No. <laughs> I thought you'd be the biggest supporter of that, Tony. Yeah, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> I wish I'd say so. Any other public comment? Mr. Madero. Uh-oh. From the planning commission, you're a current one of the planning commissions. Now, I, from what I understand, you're going to make a selection of a planning commission. You're, you're going out to do that. Well, my concern is what qualifies you to make that decision? And if we're going to need the training, you're going to need the training to, to, to appoint somebody. So you know, you got to know what, who you're appointing. You got to know why you're appointing that person, and for what reasons. And we're, if you're talking about dirt and things like that, you know, the planning commission gets together. They 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 do the best they can for what they got. And most of the time, when I was the planning commission, there was no legal support there. And when we brought our decisions, it still ends up being a council decision. So, uh, it, so it, we have to work together. I think one of the things that we need to do is to as we put the group together is have a special meeting sure. just for that sure. what are we going to do as as a team and i think uh what is expected uh and and the other thing when you're selecting somebody what is the criteria that you're going to agree on so that when people come in uh, uh wanting to be a planning commission what is that criteria we need to Achieve. 
and whether we have a chance of doing that. Thank well, you. those are all really fine points. Yeah. Uh, and for example, when I went to the League of Cities thing about a year ago or so, uh, there was an instance where the city of Santa Cruz had an opening on their planning commission. They had 37 applications, okay, you know, and I don't know how they sorted through those, uh, you know, and as Tony has aptly said, when we have a planning commission opening, for the last one where you were chosen, there was three. That's, that's a huge difference, you know, uh, and, and the people who were at Santa Cruz, they, you know, they had qualifications, I've been to urban planning, whatever, you know, and resumes a mile long and such. Uh, you know, we don't always have that. We don't always have that deep a pool, but we can choose the best we, we, we can. Again, my name, I didn't mention it, but my name is David Madeiras from 1026 First Street. Okay. We, knew, know that. we knew that, David. <laughs> some, uh, some of we recognized you. Any other public comments? Yep. Uh, goes I have mixed feelings about this. I served on the planning commission for four years. Dan was on it with me. And uh, we're the guys that decided on that housing project on First Street, just as you go out of town. Uh, we went over and over that. Uh, we recommended they have a, a loan separating First Street, and they have another street, and then the homes. It went to the, the developers, didn't like that idea. They came to the city council and they had it changed. So now we have to scoot along. The people have to back out into First Street instead of backing out into their own private street. It's a pain in the butt. Plus having to go all those little lumps all the way down there and half a dozen stop signs. That stop sign going around the turn over there. God, I've been around this town over 70 years. I've never had to stop in my life till now. I had to stop and never a car coming out of First Street. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt. Anyway, I think you guys, as a council member, if you, if you address the uh, and uh, look over the applications that come in, you can make that decision. Give yourselves a pay raise for that extra work. How the hell are How do you raise from zero up? Well, anything would count that. Anything I guess. They pointed out to me all the money you spent on. Uh, we were on a convention down in Long Beach. I mean, I don't know what it cost, but three, four, or five of us went down there. I was with you. Huh? I was with you Long Beach. Yeah, you were the leader of the pack. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, if you're going to spend that money on other people, spend it on yourself so you get yourself the what's going on, you make the decision, you deal with the people, the project, etc. And so you have to deal with somebody that you don't know whether they're going to make it as a commissioner or not. Okay? Thank you. And I think Thank you should you. get paid. I think you should get at least $200 a meeting or health insurance. Health insurance. <laughs> you told me to say that. I'll pay you that 20 bucks later. <laughs> Jackie Morris Lopez again. That was my uncle. And I don't agree with his point of view. I, I believe that it should be separate like it is now. I think that there should be a um, interview process or at least an intent of by that individual that's interested in, in sitting on the planning commission, um, you know, what their purpose is, you know, what they hope to achieve and why they're interested in holding the seat. But I also think that at the front end, um, along with the application, you should include a job description. I mean, I'm reading in the Wikipedia, which sometimes is kind of dicey with their, with their, uh, they're publishing, you know, but um, basically, you know, it says that they're responsible for um, making recommendations and their sole job is to work with the general plan. So I think it's important that you attach a job description, what is expected of them, what the general plan is, because they may not know that. Um, and I think it's really important that they do their homework and they understand that, that you know, they hold a, they hold a very um, important task to make, um, you know, uh, informed recommendations to this legislative body. I mean, you guys are elected officials, they're appointed, and it's very important stuff. It, it's, you know, we have a document in place, the general plan, zoning, codes, and whatnot. And so I think they need to be aware of what, how, that, how they need to function. You know, thank you. Okay. What's that? Is that it? Can we close the public hearing? Staff, do you have an idea of what we want? I was going to make a motion. 
Do we need a motion? Well, I was going to make a motion that we agree It seems to like we have consensus, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we have consensus. So I, I'd make a motion that we uh, request that staff, city manager, city attorney, come up with proposed changes to the San Juan Batista Municipal Code that would address the um, selection process and installation of new client commissioners. And I'm just going to cross-reference um, according to the BOC plan. <laughs> That's your fault. Can I throw in there a hundred dollars a meeting? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think Council Member Bach's plan, the Bach plan, was essentially that the Council our uh, Planning Commissioners rather be appointed at large and serve uh, for a limited period of time. He suggested four years. I'm I'm in agreement with that. And four year term is fine. So second. That's my motion. Okay. Do we have a motion? A second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. All right, we're going to end number H. You know, my, my thing said I have no G with two H's, so, but that's all right. This is a uh, hearing for the removal of John Hopper from the Planning Commission with cause. Okay. So in light of the email I received last night, I move that we table this for indefinite period. I think we have to, before we have, we have comments, no, he, he's made a motion. I, I'm i not seconding the motion. I, but somebody else. Yeah, we, we, I think we haven't had public hearing okay. or anything. Okay. So that would be the purpose of tabling it, though. I mean, if you table it before you have public hearing, then you do not have to hear this item on the agenda tonight. It just goes away. Uh, no. It doesn't go away. It's okay. well. tabled, tabled indefinitely. Okay. If you want a motion to dis you want to a motion to dismiss it outright, that's different than saying I want to continue it because Okay, motion to dismiss. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I think that if you table it, then you don't have the hearing and you can table it. There's no real direction in your city code. You know, if it tables it, it's you know, his term would be over, it would just kind of disappear. But if you do have a motion right now to um, deny, then I think you should have a hearing. Does that make sense? No. no, I'm sorry. Well, one of the options is one of the options is to continue it since he can't be here, correct? Right, and if and it wasn't continuous to table. So table is for an indefinite period. It never has to come back unless somebody says bring it back. Right. A continuance is to a date certain. That would be to the next meeting. So, do you want to continue it to the next meeting? No, I, no, no. I, I wanted it. I wanted to just kind of go away. Well, I, I, I'm troubled by it because he was he he asked for us to postpone this, continue it the last time. He was in town and chose not not to come to the meeting last time. You know, he he was seen at the windmill market by Deb. Hearing the item. Pardon me. Are we hearing the? We're item? still discuss we're, we're discussing it. And did we get the comment? Not yet. There will be a moment we. It will be a time for you to discuss it. So, you know, I, what? Why are we continuing this? Uh, well, this he, goes he back. Wait, let me. Can okay. I I'm sorry. Go ahead. So we get a a letter from him. An apology. Last night. An apology. A letter from him last night. An apology. Of sorts. Apologizing for what? Um, and ask and saying that he should be allowed to be present for a name clearing, whatever you want to call the the, the meeting. He chose not to come to the last meeting for whatever reason. He may or may not be out of town tonight. I take him at his face, take the comment at face value. But why are we waiting until the day before, the night before the meeting, to for us to react to this stuff? Because he's wanting to delay it. He's just delaying this. And to what end? I, I just thought well, this goes time with this. This, go, this goes back to October. Let me jump in here if I can. Sure. Yeah, please. Chris, Chris, what would you say about this? One more continuance, but then that's it. So the March meeting, uh, we're, we're getting rid of this thing in March, one way or the other. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I guess so. I just, it, it's. Could you live with that? Yeah, I can live with that. I'd be on board with that, John. I'd say let's let's get this thing done. Continuance. Okay. 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 So, tabling. So you're going to continue to next meeting? Well, actually, I'm sorry. Can I ask a clarifying question of yeah, that? Yeah, please. Before I say? 
I want to make some comments first, and oh, you can ask your question first. As a tabling, I can then request that we bring it up at the next meeting, and it would be on the agenda for the next meeting, correct? Ta if it's tabled? Or yes. Is that, it doesn't require us to all meet and agree to bring it back. So I don't know that we have a procedure for that. I think that... What, what do Robert's have, rules say? It's not in Robert's rules. It's, it's um, a Brown Act issue about continuing to the next meeting versus tabling. Um, I think we, you know, San Juan has not had an actual procedure, but I think you have allowed a council, an individual council member to ask the city manager to put something on the agenda and it's put on. Okay, so, so that, I'm fine with it, John. Uh, well, what I wanted to say was uh, part of the reason why I brought the last, the last item that we discussed and voted on mm -hmm. about five minutes ago was because of this situation. So, so I'm not trying to ignore it or mm -hmm. shirk my responsibilities or anything like that. Understood. I'm trying to change processes so we can get to a better, uh, a better situation. Okay. I agree. Uh, so, uh, I, I, but this also needs to be said. Uh, I, and I have several letters from many people in the um, community that, that Chairman Hopper runs an excellent planning commission. He has the legal knowledge, he has the planning knowledge, and and the, for the first time in several years, the planning commission hasn't melted down. Once again, I'm going back to good management practices. Something's working well, and I know his issues, okay? And I, it, I'm not gonna be we're, his, I, I, we're, You were discussing the issue. Okay. You're opening this up. Either okay. we're gonna okay. table okay. it, or we're not gonna let's table it, John. Let's table it. Because if you want let's to get with the, the, the nitty gritty. I'm talking about good management practices, okay? So, okay. so we need a strong planning commission with John, strong planning commission. we're gonna discuss it, or we're gonna table it. Uh, okay, so I move to table it. Okay. Thank you. We have a second? I'll second. Okay, we're gonna table it. Um, Do we need a public open up for the public meeting? Just, just on whether vote. you should table it or not. Right. Only the as to whether you should table, table it. it. Okay. Yeah, that's the only motion. thing the public should comment on. Do we need to open the public Yes. Yeah. Okay. On right. the issue of whether you should table it and then right. we should vote on it. It's an issue of whether we table it. Open the public. Sounds to me that's been on record already discussion talking about this agenda item. It's already happened. You've already been discussing it. Last five to eight minutes has been discussion on this item. And so my brief understanding, very, very, my new understanding of Brown Act and Robert's rules is that if discussion, you engage in discussion, now you're engaged in discussion on the agenda item, on your discussion calendar, agenda, whatever you want to call it. So you've already, you know what I mean? Like the, 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 because you discussed the motion on the table um, and the discussion was around what the topic, you know what I mean, what is on the agenda you were talking about, the public hearing, why we're at the public hearing, the, now you're telling us that there was an email sent, right? That, is that in the packet? Does the public know about that? Is that something that's just from you guys? You're giving us new we're information? We're talking about whether we're gonna table that. Yeah. And I think the public yeah. hearing is about your input on our tabling then. Right, okay. That's right. Okay, I don't think that you should table an item that you've already discussed. All right, thank so you. So I think that you should continue discussing and open the hearing and get this over with. This has already been going in three months on this, right? We have other five, work to do. Five months. Five months, okay, we have other work to do. And if you're gonna let um, Chairman Hopper do his work, let him work, why are we wasting time on this when we could actually be getting city business done? Is that got something to do with tabling? Right, so it's like tabling yeah, again you're, you're offset for six you. months. So yeah. I'm mean, like talking about the table and you already discussed it, so I'll just open it up. Okay. Right. Excuse. We have a motion, anyone else from the public? Okay, we have a... Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is on tabling. This is on tabling. <laughs> on tabling. On tabling. I'm glad you did that. I think you should discuss this even further, more. John is a good, honorable man. He made a mistake. You don't shoot him. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Does yeah, this, this have to do with tabling? What does this have to do with the tabling of the item? I'm in favor of the tabling of the item. Okay. All right. That's all I can say? That's, yeah, well, that's it. That's it, Ruth. That's the only issue right now. Thank all right, you, you guys table it. Thank you. On tabling. Sorry, you didn't say what I was going to say. Um, I don't understand continuing or tabling exactly this item. Um, 
it's been discussed over and over again. As Mendisa said, you discussed it tonight. Um, Good. Get on with it. If, if a planning commissioner doesn't have the support of the council, that in itself is a problem. Thank you. Any other public comment? I'm going to close public comment. We have a motion and a second. Yep. John, John, John Rush second. John's yeah. I move that we table the, the, the item. Two. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. To the aye. aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. One. Four to one. So yeah. the city manager just no wanted me to clarify for the public. So tabling means that it could never be brought back on the agenda. That's what I wanted but to ask. But if an individual council member meeting? decides to bring it back, yeah. then it will come back on the agenda. Right. Does someone have to request ask it to be put on the yes. agenda yeah. for yes. the next yeah. meeting? Yes. Okay. I'm opposed to tabling. You're opposed? Okay, that's 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two. Three, two. Do you want to roll call first? Okay. Absolutely. Council member no. Councilmember Marcharana? No. Councilmember DeVries? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Freeman? Yes. Mayor Webb? Yes. Three to two. Could I vote for you? Yeah. All right. Item number seven uh, update on the solid waste franchise renewal uh, and uh, city manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is not an, uh, an action item, but I wanted to bring to your attention and the attention of the community the potential for changes in our solid waste or garbage collection services. There is an existing franchise or contract by which Recology San Benito provides solid waste collection services in our community, and that franchise expires on June 30th of this year. In anticipation of that, the Solid Waste Regional Authority, of which we are a participant, uh, established a request for proposals and sought proposals from qualified companies to take over the franchise on July the 1st. The reason why this is significant is because the services may change and the rates that we all pay, whether residential or commercial customers, are likely to change as a result of this major decision. This decision is coming up real quick, and a subcommittee of the three agencies, County, City of Hollister, and City of San Juan, will soon be meeting to review the responses to the request for proposals and make recommendations to the respective governing bodies, the Board of Supervisors and the two city councils. It's not likely that this will be able to be accomplished by June 30th. Therefore, I wanted you to be aware that it's likely at some point in the next month or two, we may come back to you and ask for an extension of the existing franchise pending the review of these other proposals. The reason why the rates are going to be different is because we may have a different provider but also because we're going to have a different mix of services. The request for proposals asked the companies to give us ideas on how to better meet the state goals for diversion from the landfills. There is a goal of 50% of the waste stream being diverted from landfills. We are currently at about 27% as a community. Commercial businesses, even worse than that, so residences do better than commercial businesses. With recycling. With so the RFP asked the providers to tell us how they might increase the level of diversion through programs, through education, through offering different uh, kinds of containers, whether they're bins or uh, carts. So you know, there's a lot of moving parts in this uh, review, and I just wanted to alert you as a council and begin to alert the community that there are changes in the wind, uh, they will involve different services, and they will likely result in different rates. The current provider has submitted a proposal and may be ultimately selected, but there are at least two other options. So this is simply for your information at this time. Thank you. Yes, comments yes. from the council? Uh, the only comment I have is thank you for giving us yeah, a yeah. Uh, paying attention to this stuff. All right, we're going to open a public hearing on this. Any cards? Anyone want to speak? All right, we're going to close the public hearing. And uh, 
is to send in a discussion item, so we don't need anything. Okay, we're going to go to 7B, Code of Conduct, Subcommittee Report. You want to do it or you want? No, I, I, you, this has been, you have done the lion's share of the work on this project, and I would, I, I really appreciate that. Okay. Um, I would say that we should retitle this Code of Ethics, um, given the shift, sort of the shift in what we've, uh, we are presenting, um, it's, you know, it's on the agenda as a code of conduct, mm -hmm. but I, I would say it is more of a code of ethics. And um, I, I think that, well, maybe I will. I'll talk for just a moment. It, it, go, ahead. Go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, we've sort of looked at a couple of different um, pathways. Ed has suggested a, a fairly straightforward sort of three-item checklist for sort of standards of behavior, if you will. Um, John has done a bunch of looking around at other municipalities and what they do in these circumstances. And um, there's there's a lot of them that are almost like... Um, uh, Books. Or like, they're, yeah, they're, but they're, they're, they're more like... Um, criminal code. If you do this, then we, you know, this is the consequence. And if you do this, this is the consequence. And if you do this, this is the consequence. And I think that's a rabbit hole that we just decided that it didn't make sense. It was just so much material. They'd run to 20 pages. They got, it was out of hand. And in looking around, John identified another city that has a more streamlined, sort of higher level the, you know, here's here are standards of conduct or sta ethical standards that everyone is expected to adhere to, and we're I, I think we're close to a draft to present. Yeah. So we met last week, and and, and this is another attempt by, by this, this council to uh, uh, you know kind of address some issues that have been mentioned tonight, and so. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, and so I found this one. It's aspirational in its uh, uh, goals, and it, it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't you know make you go to jail or anything. So anyway, it's 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 all good. Um, but it spells out conflict of interest, talks about communications, decisions on merit, talks about how you should conduct yourself at a public meeting, talks about policy roles of members, independence of boards and commissions, because this will apply to the planning commissioners and to the strategic planning commission and any other commissions we may have. So uh, uh, that's, that's important to know. We have implementation, positive workplace environment, independence of boards and commissions, which we just talked about, uh, uh, compliance and enforcement. I can, I can read it. It goes pretty quick. Or I think we should okay. just distribute it once we get it tightened yeah. up. So what I did do is um, both Michelle and Ed had some uh, um, yeah, input and revisions into the one that I gave to the little meeting we had last week. Uh, I incorporated, I would say, 90% of Ed's and Michelle's revisions into this. And... Uh, uh, and here it is. Sounds good. Yeah, I think we need to take another pass through it, and then yeah. we'll probably be ready to present it at the yeah. at the March meeting. But I, and part of this is, I think, a, a recommendation on our part that this is something that should be, you know, covered with people interested in running for city council, prospective planning commissioners, people on what any commissioner panel that's appointed by the city that's these Brown are, Act it, it, yeah, Brown yeah, Act. that's that's covered by the Brown Act should these are the conduct standards for ethical standards for the city for everybody and if you're going to participate this is these are the expectations and and it's it, but it but it also means we need to proactively be training on it and not just handing over a piece of paper and walking somebody out the door. It's something that we should, I think, periodically be going through in detail at at our different meetings. So at the end of the thing, it was says on a yearly basis or right. once a year that each each member of each commission and each city council shall review it and, and re-sign it and re and kind of reaffirm that they've gone over the the document and understand it. Yeah. What's the difference between that and the ethics, ethics training we take every two years? Well, it, there's not necessarily a lot of difference, but
but the ethics training, the five of us are responsible for taking it. There's no conversation about it. There's no communication of it to the public so that they understand necessarily what the ethical standards are. Uh, you know, I, it, I frankly, the, one of the question I'm going to ask during the next election, whoever's running for office, I'm going to ask them, what's the difference between ethical and legal? Because I don't think a lot of people get it. <laughs> what's the difference between ethical and legal? Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's ethical. In fact, there's a huge gulf there yeah, for, in, in many cases. <laughs> I want well, that's exactly right. And so, so I would also add that this aims for, I think, a little bit higher standard of behavior than just the ethical training of a, whatever it is, um, AB 12134 yeah. or whatever it is. Uh, you know, it, it asks a little more of us uh, in our behavior towards each other, towards the public, towards our planning commissioners, yeah. and it asks a little more of the planning commissioners also. It, it's, it's, it's not a free ride. Right. And, and it provides something for us to fall back to. You know, yeah. hey, what, you know, di what happened and how does that jive with this code, you know, this mm -hmm. ethical, so these right. ethical standards? Mm -hmm. right. Well, so he, for these reasons, this is not Hey, I'm not wearing no tie. <laughs> Just, yeah. Ties, ethics has nothing to do with that. That's ties. not in there. Well, camp, shirts, <laughs> camp shirts are allowed. <laughs> um, yeah. so, no, they're not. That, that was for Jackie. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we need for this? Uh, no action. Public comment. Any public oh. comment on, on code of ethics? Let's <laughs> oh. <laughs> see. I'm retired educator, oh, yeah, I'm an elementary school teacher, a high school teacher. I have elementary and secondary teaching uh, administrative credentials. On my credentials, there is a code of conduct. What I have to do, if I violate any one of those, I lose my credential. If I lose my credential, I can't teach anymore. I can't administrate anymore. I'm out of a job. By the same token, you have a, set of, a code of ethics or conduct for your city council members, for your planning commissioners, whatever in place. They follow that, they break it, they're out. Simple. And this gives us a good framework to Pardon? work. This gives us a really good framework to do that. We didn't really have that before. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I was on the planning commission. Everybody told me how to behave myself, but I was a saint anyway, so it didn't matter. I was with you in Rotary. I know better. Anyway, I'd watch for lightning and come down. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Any other comment? Thank you. All right, we're going to close the book. One more. Once again, Anyway, and I do agree I with that. Tell people the rules <laughs> I would agree with my uncle and the rest of the um, councilman and mayor West that there needs to be, you know, I think um, San Juan's kind of operated in its own distinct little quirky way, kind of like, um, you know, a little, you know, I don't get into that, but I think it's time, you know, to kind of tighten the ship up a little bit and be more professional so that there isn't stuff that's left for um, subjective review or accusations that this guy's being helped out by this guy or this person or you know I just think that if we have something in writing and there's an expectation how to operate in that capacity if you're appointed or elected that there's no question of it um, and operate from there you know I, I fully support that and I'm going to probably maybe upset some people um, but I'm going to say what I have to say because I've been kind of thinking along these lines a long time ago, um, the whole process of getting people either elected or appointed, I really feel there needs to be some gappage in their, um, how would I say this? And I feel like there's been some planning commissioners and maybe some councilmen and um, city staff that maybe have some agendas that the public doesn't know unless you do some digging around that they're aligned or they maybe they get paid for a living with contractors that have active contracts with the city of San Juan. I feel that that's really highly inappropriate and they, I don't know how you can look at that because we do have a small pool and you know 
people sitting on the councils, people on the planning commission, maybe in real estate, maybe in development, maybe with granite rock, maybe with who knows what, the recycling company. But I feel as a citizen that there should, there should be some investigation. If there's an active contract with the city by the employer, we really need to look at that hard and close as to um, is this something that this individual will need to recuse himself? How can we know as the public that this person is going to be ethical and operating unbiasedly? Thank you. Let me just respond to that quickly. Uh, I work for Granite Rock, and when I was on the hospital board, we had contracts come up. On the city council, we've had contracts come up. Uh, and I've always recruited myself for that. In fact, I'm the biggest advocate of don't fix your roads. Mm -hmm. There's only three reasons to fix your roads. You're getting stuck in the winter in mud, you're getting choked in the summer by dust, or you want to see how fast people can drive through your town. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to fix roads. <laughs> For me, I, I don't put a speed limit, but I chop them all up. Mm -hmm. But I have never, I've always advocated that, and I always do recruit myself. I mean, Granite Rock is a pretty big outfit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, th those contracts are hard to hide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been in the construction industry for 53 years. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know where I'm from. I think, Jackie, I, I, that's why this came up. We just we need yeah. this stuff to be more open. That's Dan and I had that conversation, you know, with the cannabis ordinance where we were we were trying to just work on it and keep it under wraps, and then we just started getting pinged by all these people and said, no, we we need to make the we need to lay this uh, lay out out in front of everybody mm -hmm. and be totally open with it because it's not there's too much opportunity for for those those sorts of questions. So well, yeah, as a, as a public um, you know member and citizen of the town, you know, I have chosen now after like more than four decades living here to kind of be sort of, you know, involved on my level, which is kind of being sort of a pain in the butt sometimes, maybe with my questioning and, and comments, but it's like, unless this, the, the citizens are not aware, and, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come up here and, and engage in the discussion, but I think, you know, it's time for San Juan to still still be quirky, but be on board with, you know, with um, ethics and legal things and do better for the city and do better for um, our um, citizens because we, uh, we had some um, very suspect things happen with the developments that are now going to be developed. Thank you. So one of the few shirts I have that doesn't say Hi, um, Mandy Sosnodi again. So ju I didn't hear um, the discussion or the presentation of this item, but I just want to echo um, Jackie's comments on the need for government transparency, the need that your constituents have to understand, for you to disclose your contracts, for you to disclose potential conflicts, um, the perception of a conflict, what your biases are, just be honest with us and say, hey, listen, I'm really for this thing or I'm really not for this type of thing mm -hmm. so we can know you and so try and relate to you better and so that you can represent our interests, which is why we elected you to represent our interests, right? So if we don't really know where you stand or how you align or if you don't really, you're not committed to conducting yourself in a specific way, you're, anything goes and then our voices get lost in your biases and your perception or the perceived conflict, not that you could have a conflict, but just the perception. It almost seems to me that um, creating a code of conduct is long past due. Um, and then it says on the agenda that this is going to be a committee. So who's, is it going to be an ad hoc committee? Is it going to be? We have an ad hoc, it's John and I. J just created? When was that created? Long time, long time ago. ago. Long time ago. Months ago. <coughs> and it's and what's that committee called again? It's a subcommittee for a code of ethics, ad hoc code of ethics. So uh, an ad hoc ethics. committee for code of ethics. And we're almost done. Um, do you have a draft of a code? Yes, we do. Is that we draft do. gonna come forward at some point in time for us yes. to look and comment on? Soon. That's the part you missed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're Thanks close. for being repetitive. We're real close. <laughs> real close. Yeah. Real close. And that will be advertised at loudly everywhere. So well, it'll, it'll be on. A, it'll be. It'll be on the agenda probably for the next meeting. To, that will. I think we'll yes. probably propose. I think Make so. our suggested uh, code of ethics. We'll and, uh, it to the for adoption to the council. 
and I think it, we can put, certainly if it goes in the packet, it can go on the website. Yeah. And if it passes, I'd like to see it on the website permanently. So anyone just passing through, looking at the website, can look at it if they want. You know. Okay. And are there any municipalities that you're modeling this code of? Yes. Uh, yes. Sure? That was already the other part I missed. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> any other public comments? Public comment period is closed. How All right. Um, waiting for your report. We're going to number eight comments, City Council. Yes. Um, I, I would like to see maybe a, a discussion of, of the following items in the next couple of months. Um, since we're a model green city, electric cars are going to be a big part of our world in the future. Um, PG&E is putting in 7,500 electric charging stations across their service area. Uh, maybe we can get grants or convince PG&E to put a few in us. Uh, AB 1083 charges the state PUC to install electric charging in, in or near state parks. Since we have a state park, I would suggest the little street next to the AT&T building. What's that called? I forget the name of that street. I'm sorry. Washington. 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 Thank you. Where, the, the, where Roger put the angles in, we can put five or six or eight or nine charging stations. <coughs> it would be really nice. Um, and so these, this is mandated by the state, and I'd like to see, it, it's going to require coordination with Public Works and PG&E and the state of California, so, but I'd like to see us at least start to work on it. Cool. And secondly, happy birthday to Councilman Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Tony? It is. Oh, okay, Chris, do you have something? I do not, thank you. Dan? Yes, my yes. only concern is people who leave roll off trash things in front of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should be just whooped, flogged. How long are you going to put up? Yeah, been in a week. I thought it was yours. No, I haven't been there. You haven't been outside your house, you've been there for a month. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, we're going to go into a uh, closed session now. Wait, I sorry. have a public um, request for comment on closed session. Oh, say again? Um, there's somebody that would like to speak to 9A. Mr. Cosio? Yeah. Oh, yes, okay. I'm sorry. Let me go. Uh, excuse me there. I got to go for uh, city manager. Do you have any comments? Nothing further. City, city Attorney? Excuse me. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, Bob Pilsu from 189 Lash on the other half of the tag team. <laughs> yeah, but we're at 189, so I figured I'd come down here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, a few issues here I've been discussed about the, uh, the uh, swapping in the wells or whatever. Uh, at one time, uh, the city always had the well, but then they bought the property from the Bacaraza family. Okay. I don't know what they paid for, but it was a few bucks. And uh, the city kind of was intending to give it up because of the nitrates in water. So uh, Coke started using it for farming, which is not a problem for farming. Okay. So then they decided they were going to put a pellet softener in there. Well, that hasn't happened yet, and it's not going to happen in that location. So, in the meantime, they put in a, uh, a lift station there, right, because they were going to have a, a bathroom in the uh, pellet softener. So then uh, the fellow that owns a commercial property there, Diaz, he was having a lot of problems with the septic tank. So uh, Roger said, well, we'll put in the lift station a little bit early, and you could jump into it. So, I mean, he pays a sewer bill. But he doesn't pay the maintenance or electric on it. Okay? So now that they're going to move, supposedly, the pellet softener to the new location, uh, my question is uh, uh, who's going to uh, pay for the electric on that? You know, because the city's not going to use it anymore. It's just going to be this and this Coke guy. But then there's only one meter at that panel. So how are they going to determine? 
how much the city paid for the electric for the lift station and Coke's portion for the for the well. No, and I'll leave uh, kind of sidetrack here. I noticed the wells laying on the ground out there, the turbine, and all the piping. I mean, uh, the city paying for that, or is Coke paying for that? You didn't have the property yet that I'm aware of, but they're redoing the, the, uh, the pump. So uh, it's something for you guys to, to kick around, because you know, there's more money there. Uh, and as far as, uh, like I say, if it does change to the city is going to pay for the lift station, and Coke's going to pay for the irrigation. How are you going to split that up? And who's going to pay for it? You know, you're going to have to have two meters. Right? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, I don't feel that the citizens of San Juan that are paying sewer bills now should pay for that individual's commercial establishment to use that lift station once, you know, we're not going to use it anymore. And, uh, I know that came up with people on uh, Land Court. And believe it or not, the individual that wanted to pay was the individual that has a unit now. And then he decided, hey, that'd be cool because I'm going to get one, which he did. Okay, so, so he's not paying for that. And then going to the new well, okay, I think the city manager had an article in there, if I remember correctly, a month or so, that Coke could use that in the event of an emergency. He said his well's not working, he's got the crops, he's got water. But he did mention that Coke would pay for it. He'd pay for the electric and he'd pay for the water. But there again, who's paying for all that change order? Because you, know, you have to have a means of measuring for the electric and the water. I mean, it's not a big deal. But why do we keep giving the ranch away, is my understanding, with the city? So I mean, maybe you guys, uh, in your spare time, could take a peek at it and see what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I just threw this together real quick while I was eating my okay. TV dinner tonight because I haven't approached you guys in a long time, so you're lucky. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Uh, the city manager has that information. We'll have that information. All right. Yeah. I have a motion. Oh. Any other we, got another, we, got another, we, got <clears throat> um, we didn't have a TV dinner. We had fried shrimp. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> Anyway, just to reiterate a little bit of that, um, we paid as a city a whole lot of money for that piece of property from the Vacarazas. And um, it seems to me like we're going to pay again to move it, and what are we getting for the existing property? Um, to me, uh, the comment was made that Coke has us over a barrel. He's got a well. We want it. But um, he's used that other well um, in the past and actually was quite happy with the nitrates in it because it gave him fertilizer. Um, so I really want to make sure that you understand what we're giving away in trade for this well. If it was a straight across trade, I wouldn't even be up here talking about it, because to me it should be. But it sounds to me like he's going to get a lot more out of the deal than we are. And we have a lot invested in, in that well and in that location. Um, and I just hope that the council will take that into consideration when they make this swap, if that's the decision that they that they make, you know, there's a cost of moving all the equipment down there, and and like my husband mentioned, the the existing services that have been put in there for the pellet softener, um, which may not happen at that location, it may not happen at all, but uh, there has been quite an investment in that property. In my opinion, it was never a good location for the pellet softener. To me. I would have put it in that lot there along Lang Street that's uh, going to be a park someday, we hope. It could have easily also accommodated a, a well and a pellet softener. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? I'm going to see none on the closed public hearing, and I need a motion to adjourn to what? closed session. No. We, we don't. Do we? Oh, okay. Adjourn to closed session. Okay. Is that correct? I I
I move that we move the meeting to a closed session meeting. It's, I don't know if that's the correct terminology, but but uh, okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Passes unanimously. Mayor, for the public, uh, I anticipate that this closed session item could take uh, a minimum of 15 minutes, perhaps longer. We'll stay here, so we'll ask the public to uh, leave the council chambers. At the conclusion of the closed session, we'll invite anyone to come back in and report the results of the meeting. Thank you.